Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'd like to hereby call to order the Escambia County Planning Board rezoning meeting for November 2nd. Uh, we do have a quorum. I think we're just missing one board member, uh, so we do have a quorum. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask everyone, please turn off uh, your cell phones or put them on silent and uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good morning, staff. Do we have proof of publication of the meeting? Yes, sir. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to waive the reading of that legal advertisement. Salute. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Previously been, uh, you've previously received the minutes from the uh, last month's meeting. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to those meeting minutes? Hearing none, Chair will entertain a motion to accept as is. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The rezoning hearing package for November 2nd and the findings of facts has previously been provided to all of our board members. Chair will now accept a motion to accept that rezoning hearing package, the findings of facts, and the legal advertisements into evidence. So moved. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Our motion carries. The rezoning hearing package, the findings of facts, and the legal advertisements will be marked and included in all of today's cases. At this time, I'll ask our court reporter to swear in the members of the staff that will be testifying. Everyone raise your right hand if you sign to swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this case. It will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and so you do affirm. Okay. Thank you. Members of the board, you've been previously provided qualifications uh, and background on these members of staff that are going to be testifying as expert witnesses in the area of land use and planning. Do any of you have questions about their qualifications? All right, hearing none, Chair will recognize the staff members as experts in the area of land use and planning for all of today's cases. At this hearing, the Planning Board is acting under its authority to hear and make recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners on rezoning applications. Rachel, I'm going to ask you to bring up the uh, criteria, please, while I'm doing this. These hearings are quasi-judicial in nature. Quasi-judicial hearings are like evidentiary hearings in a court of law, however, it is less formal. All testimony will be given under oath, and anyone testifying before the Planning Board may be subject to cross-examination. All documents and exhibits that the Planning Board considers will be entered into evidence and made part of the record. Opinion testimony will be limited to experts. <clears throat> Excuse me, and closing arguments will be limited to the evidence in the record. Before making a decision, the Planning Board will consider the relevant testimony, the exhibits entered into evidence, and the applicable laws. Each individual who wishes to address the Planning Board must complete a speaker request form and submit it to the staff members. They're located at the back of the chambers. You will not be allowed to speak unless we receive a completed form. This is important. Please note that if you do not speak today on the record before the planning board, you will not be allowed to speak at the subsequent planning, excuse me, Board of County Commission hearing. No new evidence can be presented at that BCC meeting. Therefore, all testimony and evidence must be presented today. The Planning Board will provide a recommendation for each rezoning request to the BCC. They will then review the testimony, documents, exhibits, consider the closing arguments, and make a final decision. All decisions by the Board of County Commissioners are final. Anyone who wishes to seek judicial review of that decision of the BCC must do so in a court of competent jurisdiction within 30 days of the date that the BCC either approves or rejects the recommended order of the Planning Board. All written or oral communication outside of this hearing with the members of the Planning Board regarding matters today 
are considered ex parte communications. Ex parte communications are presumed prejudicial under Florida law and must be disclosed as provided in BCC Resolution 96-13. As each case is heard, the chair will ask the board members if anyone has been involved in ex parte communication, identify themselves and describe that communication. For the rezoning criteria, draw your attention to the board as required by 2-7.2 of the Escambia County Land Development Code, the Planning Board's recommendation to the BCC shall include consideration of these following conditions. The approval conditions, in this case, the applicant has the burden of presenting competent substantial evidence that the revo reviewing board establishes that the requested zoning district would contribute to or result in a logical and orderly development pattern. The appropriate surrounding area within which uses and conditions must be, co must be considered may vary with those uses and conditions and is not necessarily the same area for the mailed notifications. A logical and orderly pattern shall require demonstration of each of the following conditions. The first one is consistent with the comprehensive plan. The, purpose, the proposed zoning is consistent with the future land use category as prescribed in LDC Chapter 3 and with all other applicable goals, objectives, policies of that comprehensive plan. If the rezoning is required to properly enact a proposed flu amendment, future land use amendment, it must be transmitted to the state for agency for review. The proposed zoning is consistent with the proposed flu and conditional to its adoption. We do have one case that that is the case today. Consistent with zoning district provisions. The proposed zoning is consistent with the purpose and intent and with other zoning established provisions prescribed by the proposed district in the chapter. Compatibility with surroundings. All of the permitted uses of the proposed zoning not just those anticipated by the rezoning applicant are compatible, as defined in Chapter 6 with the surrounding uses. The uses of any surrounding undeveloped land shall be considered the permitted uses of the applicable district. Compatibility is not considered with potential conditional uses or with any other non-conforming or unapproved uses. Also, in establishing the compatibility of a residential use, there is no additional burden to demonstrate the compatibility with specific residents or activities that are currently protected under fair housing laws. Appropriate of spot zoning. Where the proposed zoning would establish or reinforce a condition of spot zoning, as defined in Chapter 6, the isolated district would nevertheless be transitional in character between the adjoining districts or the differences with those districts would be minor or sufficiently noted. The extent of these mitigating characteristics or conditions demonstrates an appropriate site-specific balance of interest between the isolated district and the adjoining lands. And finally, appropriate would change their changing conditions. If the land uses or development conditions within the area surrounding the property of the rezoning have changed, the changes are to such a degree in character that it is in the public's interest to allow new uses, densities, or intensities in the area throughout the rezoning, and the permitted uses of the proposed district are appropriate and not premature for the area or likely to contribute to urban sprawl. At the beginning of each case, as long as there are no objections from the applicant, the staff will briefly present location and zoning maps for the property. Then we'll hear from the applicant and any witnesses that they wish to call. Then we'll hear from the staff and any witnesses that they may wish to call. And finally, we will hear from members of the public who have completed a speaker request form. Um, I did want to just briefly, because we have a lot of folks here today and we will give everyone a chance to speak, just a little bit about the rules of our chamber here. We do have a timer. Uh, that we use so that we can make sure we hear from everyone so each person will be given a fair amount of time uh, that's been previously decided by the board the other thing is and if we Rachel could you go back to the um, criteria please these are the criteria for a rezoning that the planning board can consider okay 
These are the only things that we can consider. So when you make your comments, if you'll try to keep them limited to one of these categories, it makes our job a lot easier. There are other issues in some case that are not the purview of this board, and a lot of those are covered through what's called the Development Review Committee or the Development Review Process. Things like stormwater and traffic and things like that, those are handled when the county reviews an actual master plan or a site plan of the property. They're not reviewed at this level. We're only dealing with the zoning. So therefore, I ask you to pick one of these categories and keep your comments tailored because these are the only things legally by law that we're allowed to make the decision on. Okay, so that's a little bit confusing sometimes, but um, uh, we'll, we'll let you know if it's outside of the purview of the board. All right. Uh, we do have uh, four rezoning requests today, and we're going to just jump right in um, to the public hearings. The first case is Z202110, Kelly Bocart and Corinne Isabel, the owners, 11710 Gulf Beach Highway, 0 0.0389 plus minus acres from high-density residential district, four dwelling units an acre to low-density mixed-use seven dwelling units per acre. Members of the board, on this case, is there any ex parte communication between you, the applicants, agents, attorneys, witnesses, fellow planning board members, or anyone from the general public prior to this hearing? I'll also ask that you disclose if you have visited the subject property and also disclose if you're a relative business associate to any of the parties. And we'll start, good morning, Steve. Yes, good morning. Uh, no to all. Thank good you. morning. No to all. No to all. Morning, Chair. Yes, I've never had to say this before. And uh, our council has uh, instructed me to read the following. Um, so it's a disclosure of local officers' interest. And it says, I, Timothy Scott Pyle, hereby disclose that on November 2nd, 2021, a measure has come before or will come before my agency which is inured to my special private gain or loss and also inured to my special gain or loss of my business associate, Ms. Valerie Hawkins, who's uh, here today and will speak. Um, the measure before my agency and the nature of my conflicting interest in the measure is as follows. I'm a real estate agent who found the property owned by the applicant and went to contract with my broker, potential buyer, based upon the contingency that this property zoning has changed to allow her to conduct her business without having to live on the property. Uh, it also states that if disclosure of specific information would violate confidentiality or privilege pursuant to law or rules governing attorneys, a public officer who is also an attorney may comply with the disclosure requirements of this section by disclosing, by disclosing the nature of the interest in such a way as to provide the public with notice of the conflict. And it's dated and signed by me today. And I can explain any more, less, I can say in English, however you <laughs> want me to tell, I'll be glad to share. All right, I think that's appropriate. Um, the rules of the planning board, well, in general, the, the law states that Mr. Pyle will be able to participate in the discussion. However, he will not be allowed to vote on the, on the issue. So um, that's how we treat that. As far as chairman have an ex parte communication, I have none. No to all. No to all. And no to all. All right, thank you. Staff was notice of the hearing sent to all interested parties? Yes, sir. Okay. And was that uh, notice of the hearing also posted correctly on the subject property? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And who's our applicants this morning? Okay. Good morning, ladies. I'm just going to ask you, are you okay with the staff presenting uh, locational maps and photography for the property before your presentation? Yes, sir. Okay. They've indicated yes. So staff members? Thank you, Chair and Board. John Fisher, Senior Planner. This is Zoning Case Z 2021-10. Here you can see the locational and wetlands map along Gulf Beach Highway. Um, there in the center, um, you have the project site. This is the future land use map. Uh, the subject property and the whole surrounding area is mixed-use mix suburban. This is the zoning map. You can see that it is currently zoned HDR and the surrounding joining properties as well with out 
um, with inside that 500 foot radius, you do have some LDR as well. This is the proposed zoning, which should be changed to LDMU. Okay, just we it's not uploaded yet, but we'll get that fixed. Um, this is the AIPD two, meaning it is in an airfield um, area potential. This is the aerial map showing the site. This is the public hearing sign that was posted on site. This is looking east along Gulf Beach Highway. This is looking south across Gulf Beach Highway. Looking west along Gulf Beach Highway. Looking on the property from Gulf Beach Highway. Those are the maps and photographies. Okay. And I do want, and I do want to say something. Excuse me, just a second. Horace, yes, if you'll state your name and position for the record, please. It's Horace Jones, the Vector for Development Service Department. As John mentioned it, we do want to make note, it would probably, whatever, the, whatever the decision is, the Chairman, we do need to basically to make that's, sure that the map, that, that staff will be changing that Should map. Be it's not commercial, that, that they are proposing low density mixed use so that that can be Let me check forward. going forward. It Maybe can be annotated be going forward. What this packet is going for BCC. So, we need to make sure that whatever the decision is, that, that, that the staff will be making yeah. that correction. And that may need to be referenced in the motion, whatever the yeah. motion is. We, we do have the map up there. It's just LDMU is the proposed for the correction. Thank you, John. Okay. Thank you. Board members, any questions uh, before we go into the applicant's presentation? Okay. Good morning, ladies. Which one of you will be presenting to start with? Okay, if you'll come forward, please. And if you'll be sworn in. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony about to be given in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be given. I do. Good morning. If you'll please state your name and address for the record. My name is Kelly Burchard, and my address is 11710 Gulf Beach Highway. 11710 Gulf Beach Highway. Ma'am, if you step a little closer to the microphone or pull it to you. Um, you have a soft voice, so if you'll just yeah, come in yeah, a little yeah. bit closer. Um, the proceedings are being recorded as well as the court reporters taking, uh, you know, verbatim. So we have to record everything. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Could you please repeat your name and address uh, so the gentleman can hear you, please? Yes, sir. My name is Kelly Burchart, and my address is 11710. Gulf Beach Highway, Pensacola, Florida, 32507. Okay, Gary. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just try to use your... If I talk any louder, I'm going to feel like I'm screaming at you, <laughs> which I don't want to feel like because I'm already nervous enough, so... Let's use this one. She can put that closer to Oh, okay. Yeah. That's closer. The microphone might help pick it up. <laughs> you don't want to be on the voice and sing you know? no absolutely not i'm comfortable in my own little space and just being quiet all right um, well you're, you're doing great I, I do have a couple questions to ask you before you go into your presentation uh, did you receive a copy of the uh, staff's rezoning hearing package and the findings of fact yes okay and do you understand that you have the bur burden of providing substantial competent evidence that this proposed rezoning is consistent with the comprehensive plan, furthers the goals, objectives, and policies of that plan, and is not in conflict with any portion of the land development code? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Please proceed then. Um, so as I stated, my name is Kelly Burchart, and I am here on behalf of my family. <clears throat> in regards to the sale of my father's home. Mr. Chair, I'll also let you know that uh, Ms. Kelly had a, a long flight from the state of Washington and got in late last night and I think has been working night shifts now for, uh, I think that's her regular gig when, uh, she, when we're going to bed, she's starting work. So 
it's been kind of a, a challenge, I think, not only getting here, but preparing for all this fun stuff. So, My condolences for your loss, and you're doing great. Just take your time. There's no rush. We're, we're fine. Mr. Chairman? Yes. She also has a PowerPoint that she'd like to have the board accept so she can go through it if you guys want to take a vote on that. Okay. All right. Could you explain to us what the PowerPoint is that you're uh, going to present? Um, the PowerPoint is just basically goes over the five categories and then um, how I see it um, as being compatible with each category. Okay. And you personally prepared the PowerPoint yourself? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. Board members, chair will entertain a motion um, to accept that as part of the applicant's presentation. So, so moved. moved. Motion, do we have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. So we'll mark the PowerPoint as applicant exhibit A for the record today. Um, we're getting hard copies of it here as well. All right, thank you. Good morning again. You may okay. proceed. Thank you. Um, so everyone in my family has a home and we would like to sell this because we have we there's nothing we intend to do with it. Um, I realize that we have neighbors across the street, which um, while I was home, when, after my father passed, I did have a chance to talk with a few of them and meet them. And it is not my intention to do anything to make their homely lives any different than what they are now. Um, so if I could just go through the PowerPoint with Absolutely. you guys. So consistent with the comprehensive plan, the proposed zoning is consistent with the future land use category as prescribed in LDC chapter three. And with all other applicable goals, objectives and policies of the comprehensive plan. If the rezoning is required to properly enact a proposed flu map amendment transmitted for state agency review, the proposed zoning is consistent with the proposed flu and conditional to its adoption. The flu is currently mixed use suburban. While currently zone HDR, this was clearly a convenience gas station at one time. At some point, change to permit the owner to live and work from this location. Low density mixed use is more transitional to the flu of MUS than the current zoning. Therefore, we believe this change is consistent with the comprehensive plan and its goal and objectives. B, consistent with zoning district provisions. The proposed zoning is consistent with the purpose and intent and with any other zoning establishment provisions prescribed by the proposed district in chapter three. And as you can see here, there's the Dollar General, the Grand Lagoon, and then, I'm not certain what building that is, but regardless. While commonly known parcels all along Gulf Beach Highway are covered with a commercial buffer, others were omitted, such as the Dollar General site, which is just a thousand feet down the road. And the LDMU seems more consistent with the zoning provisions along this corridor than the current application. Staff findings show LDMU retail services are allowable, but only very specific items unless as conditional usage. Staff also states that I, the applicant, wish to use this space for commercial application because it once was a convenience store. However, the simple fact is that the location was a convenience store, which also sold gas. At some point, the usage was taken away by the county for reasons unknown. My father used this as a home and a business. Now the individual who wishes to purchase this property would like to do the same. 
with the exception of living on the premise. And I, as the property owner, stand to be punished. The property is not strictly residential. The individual who would like to purchase the property owns a local business that has been in operation since 1971, supporting and employing our residents of our community. Dollar General, a corporation with a multitude of resources, is unlikely to give back to the community. While you may not find commercial use within 500 feet, the Dollar General is within 1,000. The entirety of Gulf Beach Highway is in transition. Not more than five months ago, Trigger started renovations to become Jocko's, a little more than a mile down from the property. Perdido Marine Supply and Mad Upholstery Marine is just 2.0 miles before. Travel another mile down, and the road is a multitude of new businesses at the intersection of Gulf Beach Highway and Sorrento. In the final paragraph, staff writes, LDMU does make for a good transition from residential. Compatible with the surroundings, all the permitted uses of the proposed zoning, not just those anticipated by the rezoning applicant, are compatible as defined in Chapter 6 with the surrounding uses. The uses of any surrounding undeveloped plan shall be considered the per permitted uses of the applicable, applicable district. Compatibility is not considered with potential conditional uses or with any non-conforming or unapproved uses. Also in establishing the compatibility of a residential use, there is no additional burden to demonstrate the compatibility of specific residents or activities protected by fair housing law. This former gas station convenience store is bordered by vacant lots. It also provides ample parking space for a business with ease of entrance and exit from the highway and no impact to others traveling. The permitted usage under LGMU will allow a new owner to maintain the building as is and utilize it to meet the demands of the business growth without creating an impact to the neighbors. Appropriate if spot zoning. Staff is correct. This property would be spot zoning. However, the entirety of Gulf Beach Highway is spot zoning. Why did this parcel lose its commercial status? Because it was unoccupied for a year? If so, why did Triggers slash now Jayco's not lose their commercial status? How does that account for the multiple commercial locations up and down the street? I do understand the 500 location criteria, which is why an open house was hosted to share the buyer's proposed use of this property with its neighbors. A buyer who is interested in being a good steward and assuring surrounding neighbors of her intentions for future use of the property. In doing so, it seems the client is being punished for handling matters appropriately. If the investor had found someone to live on the property, an application would not have been required, nor the cost and time associated with this process. However, the buyer believes in taking appropriate measurements, and in this case, a spot zoning change would be appropriate. As stated earlier in the staff's own written words, this property would make for good transitional zoning. Appropriate with changed or changing conditions. If the land uses or development conditions within the area surrounding the property of rezoning have changed, the changes are to such a degree in character that is in the public interest to allow new uses, density, or intensity in the area through rezoning and the permitted uses of the proposed district are appropriate and not premature for the area or likely to create or contribute to sprawl. This zoning will make the easiest transition with the least impact to the existing conditions that have and continue to exist along Gulf Beach Highway. Looking at the 500 feet within the property, there has been little change. However, on Gulf Beach Highway, there has been nothing but change. Recent additions like Circle K and Dollar General, who have access to corporate attorneys and funds, should not be the only property owners able to exercise their rights for the purpose of obtaining the best and most use of their property. 
In conclusion, this change would allow my family to sell to a buyer with a long track record for being a good civic neighbor, a buyer who has shown good faith by taking additional measurements to ensure neighbor awareness and attention for use of the property. This could be a great opportunity for future employment and growth, specifically to those who live and work off Gulf Beach Highway. All right, very good, thank you. Um, do you have witnesses at this time or anyone you'd like to call on as part of your case? Um, yes, sir. I have my realtor, okay. Candace Butler. Okay. If you'll bring her forward, please. Ms. Butler, if you'll please be sworn in. I do. And for a record, Butler. yeah, please just state your name and address. Wendy Butler. Legal name is Candace Butler, but everybody knows me as Wendy. Um, we listed this property on August the 22nd. And to speak to the appropriateness of this, um, since then I have received approximately 30 calls on this property, two of which have been interested for residential purposes only. Um, so every two to three days I'm fielding phone calls from people who are looking at this property for all sorts of uses. Some of the ones I've heard are antique store, used car lot, daycare center, boat and RV storage, shared professional space, counseling office, accountant's office, and unspecified retail. Um, so, you know, obviously looking at the property and, and what it is, people are um, very surprised that it is even People are looking to put something there that, um, and they're, they're questioning, well, why is this down here, you know, Dollar General's down the street, or there's another convenience store and a hair salon there, um, such as that. So that's just wanted to give you those little statistics there. Okay. Board members, questions? Did you have other questions for the witness or anything else you wish to ask for? Me? Yes. No, sir. Okay. Staff, any questions of the witness? All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. Mr. Powell. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah, I, I do want to apologize for making this more challenging than it had to be. You did a good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Do you have anyone else that you wish to present at this time? Um, yes, sir. The buyer, Ms. Valerie Hawkins. Okay. Thank you. Ma'am, if you'll come forward, please. Be sworn in. I do. Thank you. If you'll state your name and address for the record, please. Valerie Hawkins, um, 10120 Bittern Drive, 32507. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. So um, I am, my husband and I are um, the prospective buyers for this property. We do have a contingency on the contract when it was realized that um, we would not be able to use it for the intended use. Um, and I'm going to go into that just a little bit because I think it's really important for you to know. Um, um, excuse me. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. That's okay. <laughs> I talk to people all the time. We're but, nervous <laughs> up here too, so, a, you know, it's okay. <laughs> I told them both would be easy, and now they're looking at me like, you liar. Um, um, in, anyway, okay. So, um. I've been a Perdido Key resident since, since 1982. My husband and I moved from Georgia um, and we found our forever home. Um, we were, um, both, we were both licensed realtors, have been since, 19, well, he was before me, but anyway. So I've been licensed since 1984. Um, one of my first um, projects was to visit the planning and zoning office and learn all about um, what goes on there and um, it was totally amazing. I, I learned what overlays were, future land use and so, um, and over the years I've practiced that in with my real estate career. Um, Perdido Key to me and the Perdido Key area is very special. I live in Heron's Forest. For 20 years I have driven by this piece of property going to work and coming back from work and watched the evolution um, which, which was quite interesting in the beginning, you know, when it was painted pink, we were like, what? But, um, um, so, um, it, you know, emotionally, I am involved in this community. I'm very protective of this community. 
and I just want you all to know that. The question has always also come up, well, once we do this, what if she changes her mind? So I'm only going to say to you that I am extremely responsible and, again, um, protective of my home, um, which will be my home forever. Um, our business, Perdita Realty, has been in operation by us for 27 years. I am in the office six days a week, seven days a week, whatever it takes. Um, we have grown from three vacation rentals when we pur purchased the property to 165 today, all on Perdido Key, and that's all been by word of mouth. So um, I'm just very proud of what we've done, and, and this, this business is actually my life. I had no children. This is, this is what I do. Um, so the question has come up for me. So we, of course, do hotel rentals, basically. And we have linen. We provide linen, which is owned by Perdita Realty. And we are given, um, right now, we're using a professional laundry service, which worked for a while. Um, and now we're having some serious problems for the past year. Damaged linen is coming back, linen is not coming back, and it has been a nightmare. So um, I brought in a consultant um, in the vacation rental industry and said, okay, I've got this big problem, what do I do? And she said, well, you build a laundry. And I went, what do you mean I build a laundry? I'm not, I don't know anything about laundry. So that's how the whole thing started, and this was last May. Um, and so what we came up with was a clear-cut plan. We did our, we have done our research. This will be a very small inside operation, um, which this building is perfect for it. Um, we will have two, two 40-pound washers and two dryers, compatible dryers, and we will have a presser. All of that is interior. There will be no changes made to the building. There will be a heating system for the water. There is a shed out back, and that way will be contained there because I was very concerned about anything visible because we are in close proximity to Shandell subdivision. There is a huge privacy fence um, separating us. So for me, that it's imperative that there be no indication at all to any abutting property owners that we are doing anything there. A maximum of an operations manager, a laundry manager, an operations, a logistics operations manager, and two employees. That's four cars and a van that will um, pick up and deliver laundry every day. Again, everything is inside. Everything is processed inside this building. So as far as traffic count, traffic flow, um, disruption of traffic, um, I can't see that. Um, there will be no changes to the exterior of the building. Um, and I think that um, we, have, we have seen, we could see, um, I think one of the things Wendy uh, said to me this morning was, I had a call on a daycare center and I went, Oh my God, all I could see was equipment in the front yard and a bunch of kids running around. Remember, I never had children. So running around, and if I were the, the owner behind me with that big, beautiful pool, I peeked through the fence just to see who's back there, then I would be upset. So, you know, in this case, the other thing that I plan to do is there are two separate entrances, one 200 square feet, one 2,000 square feet. And we have um, our office, our main real estate office is on Perdido Key. Um, so needless to say, we have been in big trouble three times since we've been in operation. The first horrible was, one was Ivan, and our office was completely destroyed. So my home became our, became our office. And then, of course, with Sally, on not a lesser scale, but we went through that. And we evacuate every single time we have a hurricane. We've done it as many times as six times evacuating that office in one year. So what I want to do is designate 200 square feet, both for the operations manager's working space office, and I'm going to set up a, a, a satellite office for the company with internet and the things that we're going to need 
in the event when we have another storm. We all know it's going to happen. So um, there you go. That's, that's where we are, what, what I want to do. And again, this is not a selfish thing for me. I'm very aware of what a zoning change will mean. I'm very aware of the neighbors and respect for their privacy and, and peace of mind and quiet. Um, so I'm just asking that we be allowed to do this. And, you know, I also want to say that um, I hope that you can have peace of mind that my intended use will provide, and this was a quote from, the, from your report, um, a logical small commercial transition void of nuisances or increased traffic concerns. And that's what I'm asking you for today. All right. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Burkhart, any other questions for Ms. Hawkins? No, okay. Did you have anything else to present before we go into the staff's findings? We'll give you an opportunity to come back once you hear everything that's said and kind of give more. But at this point... Uh, um, no, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Before we go into staff's findings, I just wanted to make sure that everybody is clear, and we appreciate Ms. Hawkins explaining what her intended use for the building is. I think it's fair to remind everybody that the planning board does not look at specific uses. We must look at everything that could potentially go on that property with that zoning. So. We can't, it's great to know, and I appreciate your outreach to the community. I wish we had more of that when people were doing developments and, and putting in things because it would probably solve a lot of problems. But uh, we do have to be fair and state that anything that would be allowed in LDMU would be granted if we uh, push forward. So just to, to make that clear for the record. This time, John, if you'll go ahead with staff's findings, and if you would, uh, you may already be planning to do this, yeah. but just give a history of the uh, why it became a non-conforming use during the process. So okay. go ahead. Sure, and that, that's part of the findings as well. Thank you, Chair and Board members and public. Um, this is um, the rezoning case here is from HDR, High Density Residential District, from 18 dwelling units per acre to LDMU, uh, Mixed Use District. Uh, which is seven dwelling units per acre, so a decrease in density um, would be on this site. Um, under criteria A, consistent with a comprehensive plan, um, staff finds the proposed amendment to LDMU is consistent with the intent and purpose of the future land use mixed use suburban as stated in future land use 1.3.1. Based on public records, the parcel was previously developed as a convenience store and office, which are listed uses under retail sales and services of the mixed use suburban future land use category. Redevelopment of this property will promote the efficient use of utilities and infrastructure and redevelopment of a underutilized property, making the proposed use compatible with the intent of the future land use 1.5.1. Uh, criteria B, consistent with the zoning districts. Get there. Um, the proposed amendment is not consistent with the intent and purpose of the land uh, development code. The applicant proposes to sell the 0.389 uh, plus or minus acres of the parcel, a commercial property because it was a commercial property prior years before. The site has already had improvements such as parking to be used as a commercial site. With the current HDR zoning, the property can only be used as a single family resident. The property lost its commercial use once it was vacant for more than a year and is no longer grandfathered to use the property prior to zoning. However, the rezoning to LDMU does allow for a high intense commercial uses, but only a small commercial uses under 6,000 square feet, which makes a good transition between existing residential. The parcel does not meet location criteria as stated um, in 3-2.6 section E, the parcel must be within 200 feet from an intersection with an arterial street or collector. The parcel is approximately over 0.75 miles from the intersection of Bower Road. The applicant has not provided evidence of a unique circumstance regarding the parcel of the self-imposed hardship created by the owner. Um, as we saw from the PowerPoint, she did mention some locational criteria 
aspects we didn't receive that until yesterday and that's why it was um, the board voted to take that in so there are some other things there that um, the board would need to discuss about the location criteria when we move forward under criteria C um, Compatible with the surrounding uses. The proposed amendment is not compatible with the surrounding uses along Gulf Beach Highway within 500 feet radius impact. The staff observed zoning districts LDR, low density residential, and HDR, high density residential. The parcels adjacent on the north side of Gulf Beach Highway are zoned LDR and HDR, which are part of a subdivision there. While the adjacent properties to the south are a subject parcel are zoned LDR, which are part of a subdivision to the south side as well. Under criteria D, um, spot zoning, the quest, requested zoning would be considered spot zoning as this would be only the parcel, be the only parcel zoned LDMU. However, LDMU does provide a good trans, small transition between residential and non-residential as LDM only allows for a small commercial type of uses. Due to the parcel's location, the proposed zoning request would create a logical zoning transition between the low residential district and other existing zoning districts in adjacent area. The applicant did not provide a compatible analysis at that time. Under criteria E, appropriate with changed or changing conditions. The land uses of development areas within the area surrounding the property have not changed. The current request does support the transitional character use intensities of the surrounding areas. Any improvements or changes to the site will have to rev be reviewed through the site development review process in compliance with the LDC. So uh, to expand on that, if the site was um, granted the rezoning, um, in order for them to start their business, they would have to still go through a development services review process um, in order to make sure they are compliant with today's standards of the LDC. Um, this would just be, as right now, if they're not expanding anything over 1,000 square feet of impervious area, this would just be a minor, sub, or minor site plan review process um, where we'd just be looking to make sure they have proper buffering for the neighbors that um, would be needed for the land development code to be consistent and make sure they have enough parking spaces as such for whatever use they would pr be proposing showing those calculations. Um, again, it would just be a minor uh, site plan review process if this would be approved. It's, there'd still be another step beyond this. Okay, thank you. Board members, any questions of Mr. Fisher? Uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is when did it change? Jay, turn your mic on, thank you, sir. When did it change from commercial to uh, HDR? The, the zoning was never commercial. Yeah, no. The, the zoning's always been HDR. The use was commercial. It was grandfathered in. Okay, I got you. The, the second thing is, can you go over the uh, permitted uses under LDMU? Mm -hmm. Okay. Under LDMU, which is a low density mixed use district established for appropriate areas of regulations, basically, so. You can't have, um, for retail services or sales, um, gross floor area must be less than 6,000 square feet, which this building is, um, so it meets that. Um, it does allow for um, single family dwellings, it allows for duplexes, multifamilies um, as well. Um, under retail services, um, it allows for bed and breakfast, uh, repair, repair services such as small repair services. Um, such as furniture fixing, upholstery, repair jewelry, um, a small engine motor services, everything would have to be inside. Um, this, again, this excludes uh, major motor vehicle boat services or repairs, excludes those. Um, it does allow for a small restaurants, um, but, exclude, but it excludes any drive-through restaurants. So just all indoor restaurants, no drive-throughs allowed. Um, those are what's underneath the permanent. Um, allows for education facilities, um, college vacation schools, daycares, funeral establishments, places of worships, cemeteries. Um, marina would not be allowed. There's no water. Um, allows for veterinary clinics, uh, but excludes kennels outside, uh, which would have to be a um, board of adjustments approval to allow kennels outside. 
So those are the permanent uses. And, and I would like to add, uh, if I can, um, uh, board members, this, this from just from the pictures and from and from the site itself, from a logical, the site looks good. The building looks good. It looks like a commercial operation, no doubt, no doubt. And that's and that's something that you have to consider. There's a there is a business, a building, a building that is basically, it looks like a commercial neighborhood type. That's what LDME allows for neighborhood type commercial uses, residential. All those uses is compatible with the neighborhood where people can go in. It's not. It's, it doesn't have an adverse impact on the surrounding properties. Yes, the zoning is challenging. The zoning is very challenging. But as far as the use of the building, the existing building that's on site, the existing building with the parking that's there, as John stated, that's the, yeah, it will have to be upgrades, per se, but it's a good start for. So that's the decision to put you in a conundrum because there's an existing building that's there. Yes, he lived there, and you can live in a commercial structure. You can live, the code does a lot. It was not, it never had a commercial zoning. As a matter of fact, I work very closely. I know Mr. McCarty very well, and I regret it. He was a good man, oh my God. <laughs> Him and I had many discussions. Good man, good man. Um, so, 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 that's the conundrum that we are in. What do you do, board members? Well, a building, commercial building that looks like a commercial, it could be used for that. So, but HDR, LGM, is a transition, one step above. Is that right, John? Correct. One step above. So, neighborhood type uses, does the rest of the criteria is a factor that you got to consider. But it is, that's the conundrum that you're in. And Mr. Bridge, you said it. What else, the other uses that could possibly go there? They, they are neighborhood type uses. If they said that she decided, the business started expanding and she wanna go some, this particular person wanna go somewhere else. If it is the one, you still can't have no adverse, you still gotta be limited, the square footage limited, the type of uses, everything on the inside, no outside work, no outside display of anything. That's the difference as well. So it would not cause no adverse impact on the neighborhood. Or follow up to what you're saying. Um, if the board made a recommendation to move forward um, and the applicant wanted to go to one of these other uses, because we're charged with whatever yes, yes, use that they're allowed to have, could you explain what that would look like through the DRC process, what kind of things they look at if someone were to try to use an additional use here. Yes, sir. And John, you can jump in as well since you are, since you are supervisor for the DRC as well. With the site plan review processes, each, all of those uses, they have different performance standards. And if they, and if a particular use come in that may, that may go beyond that performance standards, that's when the site plan review process is gonna step in and say, hey, that particular use need more parking spaces. That particular use need more buffering perhaps a greater the storm water more impacts. So, so we will look at that once we know what the desired use is, we'll go through land development code. And if it, and if it does not, if it go over that threshold, if they can't put that use there, they're gonna have to go through the site plan review process to see if they can meet those performance standards and all of those performance standards before they get a development order to proceed will have to be in place. They may need more parking. And that's one thing we definitely gonna review with the site anyway because you gotta have ADA requirements. You cannot work around those. If there's no handicaps, part, and if it does not meet the standards, meet, meet the code, even with any use, they're gonna have to come up to ADA requirements. Um, so those are the things that the site plan review process, John and the team, and access management, Ms. Rosa, stormwater buffering, fire access, all of those things we would look at. A use may require more interior modifications well, the building code may have some, mm, you're, you're, you're at the opposite level, so you can't do that use there because you're going to need to have more sprinkler or more rooms. or so, so we would definitely look at those things 
once we know what that use is. Just because it has a commercial building, that does not mean all of those uses can go there. It is contingent upon the thresholds that are governed by the Land Development Code and the other applicable departments that we work with. Mr. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to ask staff, uh, so you're, um, it's, it's staff's position that the original um, construction of that building, when they came and pulled a permit, they built this commercial uh, building, they installed gas tanks into the ground and distributed and uh, pumped gas uh, for sale on that site, and they did so under a HDR, or was that prior to? I believe it was prior to zoning. Yes. Uh, there, okay. th we were so never that's, allowed that's that. That's my point, is I think the applicant was also told at one point that it was commercial in practice, and that they lost the commercial uh, usage after a year of uh, vacancy or just not being there. Is that correct? So a lot of people get, so it was a commercial use, and when you look at the property tax, property appraiser's tax assessment, they're gonna tax it as commercial. So a lot of people, oh, it's a commercial zoning. Absolutely. No, it's a commercial tax assessment. Absolutely. The zoning was HDR, it was grandfathered in. Zoning came in after the convenience store and gas. So one thing that, um, you know, they, if this was approved, again, they would have to go through site development review process, being most likely a minor, because I don't see them be able to add any more square footage to the building. So it's basically, we're just making sure that they meet ADA parking, um, if it's convenient, health department will jump in saying, yes, uh, the tanks have been removed or you need to remove the tanks if they're still in the ground. Those are things that, you know, we look to make sure that everything's up to compliant before they open up business again. Signage, um, the square footage, how much they're going to be using, make sure they have a 16-foot buffer around the property for any residential properties that be adjoining and stuff like that. We make sure all that is complied. Once they get their development order, then we'll be able to open up business. So, okay, so basically this was built back in the Wild West when there wasn't really much zoning. Uh, they did put uh, tanks in the ground. They did distribute gas. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Mr. Burkhart removed those tanks uh, in order to operate his business and live on premise, which he did. Uh, and if, uh, if I understand current zoning at high HDR, and this is for the folks who, neighbors who, uh, I know we did have an open house simply to introduce Valerie and her intended use, which I know is not subject to the board's consideration, but for the neighbors and the people who actually live there, I think it's of great consideration that uh, what she was planning on doing. But currently, right now, HDR, you can put 18 units per acre. Uh, right next door to the vacant lot, there are townhomes there, which are far less than 18 units per acre. But they could, in theory, purchase, tear it down, and put a a townhome of some sort that could yield up to 18 units per acre. Is that correct, Horace? They can definitely put multi-family dwelling yes. units, and, and the gross density of HDR, it definitely allows for, for that 18 dwelling space. So, so you can't have the potential of apartments or townhomes are considered subdivisions. So it's like, let's right. distinguish the two. But I think you may be referring to, you can do townhomes as a subdivision, or you can put apartments. Which is well. allowable in the current zoning. Yes, which is, is also allowable, and I explained to my broker, when we saw this property was you can do what exactly what you want to do there as long as you live there and quite frankly i believe she could have found an employee to live there uh, and uh, just to be fair and when i mentioned that to her she said that's that's not right i'm not going to do that because a neighbor i don't want to you know sleep knowing that a neighbor can say hey wait a second you're not really doing the true intent of what you know it just she decided if she was going to do it she was going to do it out in the open again back to the point earlier where it almost seems sometimes you're punished for doing the right thing it's not you know in, intentionally but it does appear that way when you have another corporate entity come in we vote no and they just laugh at you and say we'll get this passed watch and um so uh, i just want that for consideration to the neighbors that you have a choice i guess on somebody's track record and what they intend to do or what could potentially be there given the current zoning which I think is, uh, you know, it's, it is certainly, there are four miles of Old Gulf Beach Highway. And if you travel those four miles, you can see everything under the sun. And not very far from where this stands. I, I understand the neighbors, we all are concerned uh, what falls in that commercial swath and what's going to go in there. But um, 
I, again, I'm not objective uh, because I work with the person that plans on buying it, and I know I'm not objective, but I just want to bring that to your attention. And if I may, Mr. Brisky, I want to be very, very clear because we have some other cases and that this each case stands on its own merits. I don't want this board to, to make a president because we have some other cases that are coming um, before this board. We have to also look at the location criteria and the spot zoning as well. So, so that's what we have to, your decision, which I know you know your job very well, um, whatever the decision is, look at all of the criteria as well, not just but one specific aspect. Because again, you, we do have another case and it may be present today listening very closely to what you're doing right now. So let's be careful. I mind you, but every case must stand on its own merits. And each and all of the facts are different. And in this case, these are so unusual because this building is not in operation as a business. And I'm saying that for a purpose, not in operation as a business. Horace, let me, let me ask a follow-up question to what Mr. Ingwell asked and, and Mr. Powell alluded to. The building was established as a gas station prior to zoning. When did Escambia County establish zoning? What year approximately? Mm. Was it 89, 86? Oh, oh um, let, me, let me put it this way. It was in the late 80s, perhaps 89, 90, something like that. And then there was additional changes in 93, if I'm... 93, because the county zoning was... Um, the state said that you all got to do zoning, and they basically, I don't want to say used to what force, but challenged the county very, very quickly and rapidly to get it done because you have to do it okay I have a question for the applicant if you'll come forward please do you personally know the dates uh, that your father operated a business on this site just approximately year to year how long it was and when he started um, um, so I'm sorry. Yeah, you could whisper it in her ear and she could relay it, or you have to come up and be sworn in. Exactly so, <laughs> okay, if we could please swear in the witness, please. I do. Yes, ma'am, if you'll state your name and address for the record, please. Jeannie Scott, 329 Valencia Street, Gulf Breeze, Florida. Okay, and you um, were going to comment on the the history of the property. Yes, sir. So her father bought that to do his business. He was a builder. Yes, and he was. Excuse me? I said, yes, he was. Yes. Was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he was a builder, and he used that property to run his business out of there. Just basically, you know, he was a, he subcontracted all of his uh, contracts out, but he ran his business out of there. So I don't know year, what year it was actually purchased. I believe he purchased it in 88. Okay. And then I'd say up to the last two years when uh, he retired. So that was probably six years ago or six years ago. Seven years ago. Okay. So there was a period of time where he operated it as a, an office for his business. And then at what point do you remember when it was converted to a service station or a gas station with the, with the tanks and everything? Oh, well, that was, pri that that was, was prior. That was prior to him owning it then. Right. Yes. So okay. the building was there in 1932 as a gas station. Oh, wow. Okay. The building has been there since 1932. Mm. And wow. he bought the property. I wasn't even a thought then. Yeah. He, he bought the property in 88, and it took him about a year to fix it and do everything because the EPA had requirements of him with the gas stations and I mean the gas tanks and all that so it took him about a year before he could actually move into it and start running his business out of it okay so for all intents and purposes 
going all the way back to the 30s, there was a commercial use on the property, regardless of what the zoning was in this case. Okay. All right. That clears it up for me. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, can I just yep, say absolutely. something for the record? So the parking lot has always been there. It is not something that was um, an improvement made. Now he has, have it, has had the parking lot repaved several times in the last 28 years that he's been there. But the parking lot was always there. It wasn't something that he made an improvement to. And let's go to record. Repaving and redoing, that is improvement. So, and that's a good thing. Trust me, that's a good thing. Yeah, and he just had it repaved two years ago, the parking lot. So, well, so I guess it would be an improvement. Um, and, and the other thing I want to state is all up and down Gulf Beach Highway, there are many different businesses. And all up and down Gulf Beach Highway, there are residential areas, subdivisions, houses just off, off the road. But regardless of that, you know, there are homes surrounding all of these businesses. And some of these businesses probably don't take into consideration the neighbors that are beside them, behind them, across the street from them. And originally we were going to just try to sell the house as a residential, but as our realtor has stated, everyone that is interested in it is interested in it for, you know, commercial purposes. And I don't know about any of you, but if you had something that you weren't able to um, occupy yourself, would you want it to just sit there and rot because somebody wouldn't allow you to do what was best for the property and the family? I mean, can be very, um, well, challenging one and nobody likes to be told what to do with their own property. So um, with that, I would like to just say thank you for listening and that's it. All right, we'll give you an opportunity to make a closing statement once we hear from members of the public and any other uh, evidence that comes out. We always give you that last opportunity to, to summarize, so. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Mr. Jones, did you have something else? Okay. Board members, any questions before we go into public comment? One question for staff. Uh, on Criterion E, um, it states uh, development conditions within the area surrounding the property, and you say those have not changed in your findings. Can you quantify area surrounding the property? Are you looking at only parcels that share a border with the parcel? Within the 500 foot radius. So it, you use the 500 foot for Criterion E? Correct. Just like, I think it's C? We do for spot, as we do for spot, spot zoning. zoning. Else. Okay. That's why we put, we put the 500 foot radius map on the zoning stuff for that to look at. Thank you. Okay. Board members, any other questions of the applicant or staff? Could you, could you call up the, the proposed zoning, the map? So we can see. Thanks. And flu. That's in the next year. Chairman. Yes, sir. I just Read. want to make a. According to the um, Scammy County property appraiser, the how the uh, lot was built, bought in 1998, August of 98, not 88. Okay. Okay, we're going to go ahead and hear from some members of the public who have uh, signed up to speak. For those members of the public who wish to speak on this matter, please note that the Planning Board bases its decision on the approval conditions and exceptions described in 2-7.2 of the Escambia County Land Development Code 
I'll ask the staff to bring those conditions up on the board so you can review them. During the deliberations, the planning board does not consider general statements of support or opposition. So accordingly, please limit your testimony to one of those approval conditions described in 2-7.2. Please also note that only those individuals who are here and give testimony on the record today will be allowed to speak at the subsequent uh, hearing before the Board of County Commissioners. And we do have, looks like five or six uh, speakers signed up. Our first speaker is Joyce Baird. Good morning, ma'am. If you'll please be sworn in and state your name and address for the record. My name is Joyce Baird. I live at 1139 Naples Drive in Shandell, right behind the proposed location change. Um, I don't, uh, my issue is I like knowing what she plans to do with it, but what if it is a daycare or a restaurant or something that is kind of harmful to the residential, bringing in new vermin, all types of things. I really would like to see it stay residential. But that's, that's my concern. Thank you, ma'am. Tracy Salt. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, sworn in and state your name and address. I, I wrote down the wrong number. My numbers are three and four. Sorry. So I'll be later. Sorry about that. Okay. Chad Whitaker. Morning, sir. All right, sir. Your name and address, please. Uh, Chad Whitaker, 11,600 Gulf Beach Highway, um, just uh, about 800 feet from the property. I wasn't within the 500 foot uh, requirement uh, level, but uh, um, if if you would look at the over map, you could see pretty much my property. Uh, I'm just uh, here to state that uh, um, I, that I don't believe that uh, in item B that this would be uh, inconsistent with uh, the present zoning and upgrade to uh, to commercial use. Uh, I, I do appreciate the use. I I think that uh, you know setting that aside, I'm like you all looking at what could possibly happen if that business were to move or sell or something in, in, in such close proximity. Um, I, I love the walkability of the neighborhood and the sidewalks um, along there, but I, I feel like uh, um, the item C compatible with the surroundings, a commercial use uh, in this, proximity to the neighbor and it doesn't even currently meet the criteria uh, the fence is like 10 feet from the building already um, and, and it's nothing to do with the potential user it's I'm just thinking of what could come along I don't know I was trying to read and understand if uh, a conditional use permit would could be allowed for the user to occupy that as a, a the business that she wants um, you know, I would not see a problem personally with her having a, a, one of her employees live there, not to get the upgrade in zoning and that business still be operable. But that's, uh, I think you would say, an opinion. So uh, I um, also uh, believe it, I've done zoning work myself. I'm a landscape architect, but not in uh, Florida. Uh, for 16 years I worked in uh, Kentucky is a and done planning projects so um, but this definitely would meet the criteria for spot zoning uh, if you it was mentioned by the applicant that if you go up and down Gulf Beach Highway you know you know there, there are certain corridors and nodes which would make sense to be commercial property the Circle K is in a very uh, um, commercial node area the only thing that kind of went in that everybody knows about that was plopped in there probably because of um, 
time and money and and being able to do it was the Dollar General store, and I and I'm still not sure how you know that actually happened. Although it's, I I can see it as a, a neighborhood use, uh, but if the property that we're talking about became commercial, there's an a, a a a building a metal building that someone built as a garage across the street. I mean, they could say, hey, there's I'm in this node now. Let's make this commercial. My property, I front on Gulf Beach Highway. Hey, why don't I become commercial? So it, it doesn't fit within the nodes of where commercial or higher density type uses could be, in my opinion, um, appropriate. So it does not really, if you, the scale of Gulf Beach Highway, um, driving it, the residentialness uh, structure of, of where it is now, so in my opinion, it just would not fit the uh, the appropriate conditions for uh, for a commercial zoning, not necessarily use, but the, the zoning. That's all. all right. Thank you, sir. Marianne Riesemel probably murdered your last name, but right sound. Right sound. Okay. Thank you. We'll have you sworn in, please. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes, state your name and address, please. My name is Marion Wright-Zimmer. I live right across the street at 11711 Gulf Beach Highway. I was born and raised at Pensacola 76 years ago, and I love that part of town. I didn't grow up in that area, but I've been there since 93. Um, I uh, built my home in 19... Or I moved in in 19. I built that house, I had the house built, purchased that piece of property. There was no businesses in my area at the time, and I was aware of the house across the street being a business a long time ago, and um, I thought I was safe there. I can only imagine putting any kind of business across the street from me is going, is not going to damage my. Um, property value, which does not make me happy either. So I uh, am definitely against a business, and I apologize to you. You sound like you have a nice business, but still I don't think it belongs in a residential area. Um, I know the Dollar General that was fighting over that whenever I bought the property, but um, I was also told that they had already purchased the property, and that's how they got it. But just down the street where they talk about triggers and jockos and all those places, those business buildings have been there way before all this housing came in. But now it's all built up. We live here, we love it, and we want to stay there. But I would also like to point out that, and I'm, I guess I'm doing BNC, but um, a few years ago, I tried to print this this morning and it didn't come out very right, but I took a picture of a sign right down by Bower Road for um, the county put up for air shows traffic used Bower Road instead of Guppy Highway because of local traffic. Well, why, why are they trying to put a business, another business in that area if you're already routing traffic off of Guppy Highway for, because of all the residential? So the three, the two houses on both sides of me and my house, I, I can probably say they've been there less than three years. So I think we all built our homes here thinking we could retire there, die there, whatever. So I'm asking you, please don't let it happen. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, I, I have a question for her. Yes, sir, I just want to make sure that it's clarified. Ma'am, if you'll come back to the microphone, uh, Mr. Shamans has a question. I just want to clarify that you, you built the home in 2019, three years ago? Right. Two years ago? And the neighbors, too, are on that same period. Pardon me? I, they, they were already there, I think, the year before when I bought the property. But since I've built my home, I have put lots of money into landscaping, a fence in the front, fence in the back. 
and um, I just it's going to be a waste of my money if I do believe if an, a business comes in. Okay. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Ted Beamer. Thank you, sir. Your name and address for the record, please. My name is Ted Beamer, B-E-U-M-E-R, at 11228 Seaglade Drive. Uh, I have Beamer Realty right down the street, a nice commercial area west of Bower Road where all the commercial stuff starts. I was appalled when I saw that Dollar General got in there. Uh, let me pull up my notes here real quick, if I can. Um, for one thing, I, I'm also in the real estate business. I can tell you going after this past lady, I would have a more difficult time selling the property across the street knowing there's a business there. I've been in real estate for quite some time, our office. We have had Beamer Realty in Grand Lagoon area for about 45 years. We've watched everything develop. The, the property we're talking about now, uh, by the way, we own the land to the west, that large lot of undeveloped land between there and the, and the townhomes. Now, our development with that would probably be residential. You change that to commercial, you might have us knocking on your door. So consider what the other properties around you are want to, want to desire. If you spot zone and give somebody else the ability to do this, why not me next door? I'm not saying I want to do that. I'm saying look at the land, and you've got a lot of open land. People are going to be fighting that battle that it's hard to say no to. Um, I had a conversation, my father and I had a conversation with the, pre with, this, with the owner when he first bought the property. His intentions were, we questioned because he was reworking the place, all the wiring was being done commercial. His intentions at the time of purchase, which he relayed to my father and I, who is still around if you need his words for it, he'll be 96 next month, were that he was developing it to be a commercial property. He purchased it with that intention and that thought before he moved into it after, uh, back in, in the 90s, late 90s, he had, he had let us know that. He knew what the zoning was at the time he purchased the property. Um, I hear things <laughs> that uh, Heron's Forest is my home, this area is my home. Grand Lagoon was my, in my, was my home until Ivan and, well, first uh, Frederick, but Ivan removed my home and I moved back into Seaglade subdivision where I lived prior. So it's absolutely my home as well. I don't want to put a property in, Ferris, in Heron's Forest over there. I, I just want to keep my home the way it is. Um, the local, the, the zoning change and everything, I'm not exactly sure how that happened, but I know why the neighbors at the time didn't want any business there. It might have had to do with the lady who was raped in that store. She was my neighbor over the back fence. I can't tell you the address, look on the map, the one right behind my property. They had a lot of problems having a, a commercial property there. Um, again, I'm appalled that, that uh, Dollar General got in there, and I'm wondering exactly how. There might be some FOIA questions on that. Uh, yeah, it looks like a business, but when the man bought it, he knew it wasn't a business, and he made a wonderful home out of it, a unique home that in inspired conversation and so on, a very nice, lovely home that he lived in. So it makes a great home as well as a good-looking business. Uh, I don't ever remember it being a gas station. I moved here in 79. I religiously went to what we called the time waster, which was the time saver, which is now that new restaurant down the street, Jocko's or whatever. Uh, tourist priced, to let you know. Um, so uh, I guess that's about all I have to say. I'm, I'm absolutely against it. Being in the area since 79, watching it develop, watching the houses move in, and the businesses down the street, I think that's the way it should stay. I know that people around there, I know these people for decades now, do not want that business. They did not want the Dollar General there. Spot zoning, last time I dealt with zoning, which was a long time ago, having to do with a property right at the entr entrance of Chevalier that a lady named Carruthers wanted to have that made. Sir, I'm, I'm gonna ask you to wrap up your comments, yes, please. Well, that, that was shot down because it was not a, an area for commercial property at that time. So if you can research that and see that there's a history of that being denied, I, I absolutely request that this also be denied and kept the way it is. Thank you for your time, sir. Thanks, sir. Mr. Speaker, I just want to state for the record that 
uh, twice it's been stated that this zoning is being changed from what it is to commercial, and that is not correct on, on the record that it is being changed to low density mixed use. And also want to state that the previous owner also owned and operated a business out of that site, which I think has been lost uh, in the translation. And again, want to state that the current zoning as it stands would allow for 18 units per acre. And uh, just food for thought. Then there's no reason to change it. Thank you very much for making my point. It has been a business. Somebody ran a business there. And there's no reason to change I, I just, it and change our community. Really All right. Her, uh, Thank you, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Fisher. Mr. Fisher, can you, in brief, summarize the business type uses allowed for mixed use suburban, the flu? Yeah, so uh, mixed use suburban allows for basically your small retail, small um, retail sales, um, just small convenience stores. It allows for large. Mixed use suburban basically allows for any. Can, it can allow for a Walmart. It can allow for um, basically any type of commercial, except for um, it really comes down to zoning. It's it's a very broad. Our, you know, you remember our comprehensive plan has very broad categories: mixed use suburban, mixed use urban. Mixed use urban does not allow for any industrial uses, where mixed use urban or industrial could allow for light or a mix of industrial. Mixed use suburban basically allows for the neighborhood friendly type of things. You know, this really comes down to the zoning complications. Um, just, I was looking at the aerials, just for a reference to give a little more background. Naples Drive, which is the subdivision road right behind the property, was under construction in 1999 with the property there. The three parcels across the road were vacant in 2017, with the, um, the property straight across the road finally um, was still vacant in 2018. So the three properties across the street in 2017, 2018 were vacant as well when this was a commercial site business. And I want to add something too, and I know we, many times we, we forget this, and, and because we have to, it's my job to try to be fair and neutral and transparent with the, with the code. Part of the requirement for the land development code and the location criteria is to prevent strip commercial development. You know, we see it all over the place. But the goal is to prevent that. That's why the location criteria was put in place. So we want to be mindful of that. Is that John? Put up the map again. Not them trying. I'm just. I, I. I have to state these facts because again, there's another case that's coming. Horace, can, <coughs> can I ask you to just hold your thoughts one moment because I want to go ahead and go through public yes, comments yes. and get that closed and then we'll come back to you. Sure. Mr. Absolutely. Fears, did you have something during this process? Okay. At this point, that's all the folks that I have signed up to speak. Is there anyone who has not already spoken that wishes to speak? Can I get a clarification? Yes, sir. Come to the microphone. My name is Ted Beamer. Um, I was corrected or a comment was made by, and I appreciate you uh, letting us know that you work with the party. You have been the most boisterous person on the panel defending the party. So I think you should- Sir, we're not gonna go yourself. into personal attacks No, my clarification is that I was corrected on saying it was commercial. This gentleman just said it was commercial at that time. That's a term you used. Please correct him, sir. Sir. What the gentleman was saying, and I understood it clearly, was saying that the zoning that is being applied for is low density mixed use. So a commercial it use. At the it was already zoned commercial at the time, is what he said. Sir, there's right been now. the use of the term commercial use versus L. That's all I'm saying. There's All right, thank you, sir. I'll just state that all I was attempting to say was it had been stated as though. The zoning request change was from what it is now, HDR, to commercial, and that is not correct. The zoning change requested is from HDR to LDMU. I, I am recused, sir. I appreciate it. I've been recused. I've signed it. Sir, if recused, you continue to so make comments, we'll have I, to have I, you removed I've from the chambers. I've stated very obviously and out in front that I am not objective, and I will state that, although I do live there, and I do feel I have the best interest of that area in, in mind. So I, I just want to be clear, I'm not correcting anyone other than the fact what it is, and Horace, you can clarify, 
what this zoning change is because there's been enough confusion. I just want to make sure. Uh, Chair, I'll, just, I'll do one quick clarification. Um, so when we say, when we've been saying commercial use, that's meaning it's had a commercial use that was non-compliant with yes. the local regulations of zoning. Yes. It was grandfathered in over the last 30 years because it's been in a working commercial use. So it's had a grandfather and that was written in criteria B underneath my criteria. Right. And thank you, John, for that. And also too, let's, let's, be, let's be very clear. The, the code says specifically in chapter in the land development code that once a use goes out, a non-conforming use, that that non-conforming use cannot go back. It has to meet the current mm -hmm. standards because it is a non, I don't want to say a non-conforming use. So non-conformities, the code try to eliminate non-conformities. That is why the zoning of HDR and the rules of HDR applies because they stated that it's been shut down for many years. Now, and also too, the fact is this, is that, is that a person can live in a commercial business, but it still is a, they can live there. And I believe that was what's going on. But the, the, it was a still, HDR still a residential zoning district that allows for only residential multi, the highest and the best use would be a subdivision or, or an apartments. But apartments are still considered residential. So it converted back to that residential type use of HDR. And that's according to what the land development code that says has to happen on, on with non-conformities. It just not just carte blanche can go and stay and come back in as is. There are parameters for non-conformities. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else that wishes to speak who has not spoken yet on this matter from the public? I hereby close the public comment portion of the meeting. Mr. Fears, you're recognized first. Then Mr. Jones wanted to get some information on the record, please. I was just going to observe on the flu map, everything that we saw within sight of the parcel is a mixed-use suburban for the flu. And I did recognize that there are two vacant lots flanking the applicant lot. And the writing is on the wall. The, the future is there. Um, so just okay. wanted to make that observation. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jones. And, and John, but, but the standard is the land development code. And, I'm, and I'm, because we have to be careful, I've got to be careful with my presentation. Uh, John, pull up the zoning map again. I just want to make sure you have all of the actual <coughs> waiver options. All of those surrounding zonings, they are residential zoning districts. That's, that's the fact of the land. That's the rule of the law. No one can deny that. Um, and you don't, and see, and the purpose of the location criteria, which is things that got to be discussed and considered by this board, board members, is that the purpose is to prevent strip commercial development. Yes, it is all over the place in this county county. That still don't make it right. Do you want to have a continuance of strip commercial development? Do we have a proliferation? Because the gentleman, yes, he, he, he would, but he was correct. If those vacant parcels come along and say, hey, you did it for one, you do it for many. And that's what's going to be said very shortly. So let's be careful with that. You do it for one, a, a proliferation, then you, do you have the separation of uses, which is part of the land development code? Do you have the, do you have the distinction? Do you, will, will, will all that increase more ad, ad, adverse impact? That's the purpose of trying to, trying to go forward, not trying to go backwards, with better and sound and more predictable planning principles. I just want to state that, board members, going forward. Okay. Thank you, board members. Before we hear closing from the applicant, any additional questions at this point? Okay. Ms. Burkhart, if you'll come back up again, please. 
Now that you've heard all the testimony from the staff and members of the public, I'll give you an opportunity to make a closing statement or arguments for the case. Um, as I said earlier, that there are other businesses along Gulf Beach Highway. Um, one of the businesses that I would like to point out is Grand Lagoon Ski Business, which also has a snow cone and taco truck right in front of it, is you literally have to park on the road in order to frequent that business or spend money there. There's no parking for that business. And quite often when I was home, we would go down there to get tacos and there'd be six, eight cars strung along Gulf Beach Highway in, impeding traffic because you, there's no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? easement I guess Shoulder. or yeah in order to park um, that's that's just one business um, there are 12 businesses between uh, Blue Angel and my father's home the proposed property in question um, that aren't very far off of the highway and require parking on the highway my father's home does not require that it would not impede traffic. And as the neighbor who lives across the street, and as we pointed out that there were no homes there prior to 2017, and while my dad in 2017 was not operating as a business at that time, it still was designated a business slash residential. Um, and they knowingly put their homes there knowing that there's this building across from them with the potential because the zoning all around is a mixed use suburban. Um, and while we don't want any strip malls to happen, and yes, there are two vacant lots, those lots have been vacant ever since my dad purchased that property and nothing has ever been done with them. Maybe it's due to spot zoning, maybe it's due to planning, maybe it's due to keeping from strip malls being put up but I mean somebody could also buy the property and put up an apartment complex and then you have people coming and going and as we know apartment complexes don't always maintain a nice atmosphere or nice curbside appeal <laughs> because people put stuff on their balconies and trash just ends up going everywhere and you have cars that don't work and all these other things so while some people may not be for it and some people are against it, there are pros and cons to both. And um, I guess all I'm asking is for you to just consider it as me coming to you, not the two properties on the side um, with potential. I mean, but he still couldn't have potential to build a strip mall because we are in the middle of that. And unfortunately, that's probably what happened my dad bought it before he could. So um, with that said, I appreciate all of you listening to us and um, whatever you decide is what you decide. All right, thank you, ma'am. Any questions for the applicant or staff? I did want to make a, a brief statement just to everyone involved here. No matter how this vote goes, the commissioners have the final say in what the decision is. This is a recommended uh, a recommendation to the commissioners. So if it doesn't go the way that you think it should today, you still have an opportunity to convince the commissioners that it should go a different direction. To my fellow board members, I'll ask that if you are uh, excuse me, planning to make a motion for approval, Please address the three criteria that the staff's findings uh, find not consistent and give concrete information for each of those criteria so that the staff can record the alternate findings uh, to which to base the decision on. So with that, did you have anything else at this point? No, sir. Okay. You can go ahead and have a seat and we'll let the board uh, go from here. Board members, any questions? If no, not, Chair will entertain a motion. I'm sorry, Mr. Rush. Yeah, I was just going to entertain a motion. I was going to 
Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, put forward the motion to um, deny based on the uh, staff's uh, recommendations for Z 2021-10. Good. Second. We have a second. Discussion? All those in favor of the denial say aye. 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 All right. We're going to have to take a roll call. Mr. Rushing made the motion. Mr. Ingwell said uh, supported it as second. Mr. Fears? Agree. I agree. Aye. Oh, you cannot vote. You agree with denial? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Okay. So the motion was to deny the request uh, voted unanimously by the voting members with Mr. Pyle abstaining uh, due to his conflict. Like I said, you do have an opportunity to try to convince the commissioners uh, with alternate findings that um, in your favor if you wish to go forward with it. So. I wish you good luck with it. At this time, we're going to go ahead and take a brief recess. Could, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I would like to make a brief comment now that yes, it's sir. over. Go ahead. I, I would just like to say that to, to the family that owns the business, the property, um, that I, I see that it's a very difficult situation. And um, I, I, for me, the struggle came down to this. I could make a strong case for the change. But the difficulty is the properties that are built up around there, they bought those properties thinking that it was a certain way, a certain, certain zoning, and it's hard for me to balance between the two and find a, a medium, uh, a solution that satisfies everybody. And, and that's the reason why I could not support the motion. Had, had they been, had it been, had they moved into the situation where it was zoned the way it was, then I could support it. But, um, but it, I just couldn't the way it is, the way it is where the business wasn't operating. Thank you, sir. We're going to take a uh, brief re recess for 10 minutes. It's 1014 now, so let's come back into session at 1024, please. 1024.
Morning, everyone. I'll ask that you please find your seats. <laughs> Good question. Absolutely. All right. I'd like to hereby call back to order the Scambia County Planning Board rezoning hearing for November 2nd. Uh, we do have all of our present members uh, back, so we do have our quorum. And Mr. Uh, Pyle. Yeah, Mr. Would. Chair, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to uh, staff, uh, staff, attorney, and to the fellow board members for letting me kind of wade through that. I've never had such a direct conflict, and uh, I, I want to tell you that uh, I, I think it's great. I'm allowed to disagree with you, and I really have I, not done anything but gain more respect for the board members, and the process from seeing it from the applicant side is really intimidating, and it's terrible, and it's expensive, and I feel very badly that they went through that. But, uh, again, I think it's a lost art now that we're allowed to disagree and still be amiable and uh, move on to the next one, and I went and apologized, Mr. Beamer. I wasn't intending to be intimidating from this side of the uh, chair. I was simply trying to what I think correct the, the record. But thank you guys very much for allowing me to even be involved in the conversation, and thank you, Kia. Thank you, Mr. Pyle. We greatly value your opinion on this board and, and participation, so thank you. All right, we're going to move into our next case, which is case Z-2021-11. Uh, Ms. Meredith Crawford is the agent for Bre Brenda Hagendorfer, who is the owner. 78.28 plus minus acres uh, ag district uh, one dwelling unit per 20 acres to mdr medium density residential i'll ask members of the board has there been any ex parte communication between you the applicant agents attorneys witnesses or fellow planning board members or anyone from the general public to that matter have you visited the subject property and disclosed if you are a relative or business asso associate of any of the parties good morning steve no to all. Thank you. No to all. No to all. No to all, thank goodness. <laughs> Chairman, no to all. <laughs> no to all. No to all. No to all. All right. Thank you, board members. Staff, was there a notice of the hearing sent to all interested parties? Yes, sir. Okay. And was it also properly posted on the subject property? Yes, sir. Okay. Ms. Crawford, if there's no objection for the maps and photography. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's indicated okay. 
And who's presenting on behalf of the staff? Okay, John. John. Thank you, Chair and Board Members. John Fisher here again. Uh, again, this is the rezoning case Z 2021-11. This is the location of wetlands map. Um, this is a property that um, is not very accessible to at this time. Um, the signs were posted off uh, Mathasis Road, which is to the north of there. Um, John Wilson Road is a private road, so the county cannot go down the private road, just for when you see the public signs. Okay. This is the future land use. Um, right now, currently, it is ag. And this is um, the actual true future land use, which is the DSAP. This is in the DSAP overlay area. Um, it currently has a traditional garden, um, which, as we know, is an extra layer of zoning to look at, uh, um, implies other different things as we can go through as we go um, through this case. This is the current zoning um, as agricultural. This is the proposed zoning. Um, they were wanting to propose MDR, which is medium density residential. And this is the aerial map. Make your computer easier to use. Windows will read and scan this list automatically. Press. Thank you for your help. <laughs> okay. This is the public hearing sign um, looking south down John Wilson Road. Um, this is another public owned John Wilson Road from Mathasis Road, another view of it. This is looking west at the end of Mathasis Road. This is looking north. This is looking southeast. You can see the street sign there to give you a better, you know, where we're looking at. And this is looking east uh, from the start of at the very top of John Wilson Road. And that's all the pictures. Okay. Board members, any questions of the photography? Okay. Ms. Crawford, if you'll come forward, please. Ms. Crawford is an attorney and as such is governed by uh, the rules of the bar and does not have to be sworn in for the proceedings, but uh, of course is governed by some pretty hefty rules and regulations. So uh, if you will state your name and address for the record, please. Absolutely. Good morning, board members. My name is Meredith Crawford. Address is 125 East Intendencia. I'm with Clark Partington Law Firm. We have received the staff's findings and conclusions in this case and support those. If you want to go ahead and have them present, staff does um, support the request. So we would ask that you adopt their findings. I'm happy to answer any questions and grant the application. All right, Ms. Crawford, do you understand that you have the burden of providing substantial competent evidence that the proposed rezoning is consistent with the comp plan, furthers the goals, objectives, and policies of that plan and is not in conflict with the land development code. I do, and I'm happy to go through. We did submit a report, um, and I'm happy to go through each criteria if you prefer. We do have uh, someone signed up to speak. Uh, Rick Works uh, is here to speak. I know in some cases, uh, if you agree with the staff's findings and we don't have speakers, we do an expedited hearing, but in the case of uh, with someone signed up to speak, we have to go through the full presentation. Um, he didn't indicate whether he was in a favor or against on the form, so we'll hear his testimony as well. Sure. Uh, so with that, um, we'll let you present your case. Can you pull up the far submittal? On page six. As to criteria one, consistent with the comprehensive plan, the proposed amendment to MDR is consistent with the intent and purpose of the sector plan traditional garden. The maximum density of traditional garden is 15 dwelling units per acre. Traditional garden neighborhoods are typically located within a quarter to a half mile from town village and neighborhood centers. Um, these neighborhoods are intended to provide a transition between suburban garden and traditional village districts. The request to medium density residential is consistent with that traditional garden and would be a lower um, density. 
Consistent with zoning district provisions, the proposed amendment to MDR, criteria B, is consistent with the intent and purpose of the land development code. The parcel is adjacent to MDR to the east, west, and south, and adjacent to HDR to the north. As far as criterion three, or C, I'm sorry, um, compatible with surroundings, the proposed amendment is compatible with the surrounding existing uses in the area. Although the area is under development and in the process of being development developed right now, it's largely surrounded by vacant, undeveloped property that is zoned MDR um, or HDR for residential uses. The proposed use can be conducted and operated in a manner that is compatible with the adjacent properties and other properties in the immediate area. Within a 500 foot radius area, the applicant has identified properties within zoning districts MDR, HDR, and AG. As to spot zoning, the amendment request if granted would not be considered spot zoning. The property is adjacent to MDR zoning to the east, west, and south, and adjacent to HDR to the north. And then appropriate with changed or changing conditions. Based on existing uses and intensities and zoning district allowances, the proposed amendment would not create urban sprawl and would be compatible with existing or proposed development. The proposed rezoning will result in a logical and orderly development pattern due to the fact that the parcel is adjacent to other MDR zone property and meets the purpose and intent of traditional garden neighborhoods within the sector plan. Okay. Board members, any questions? Meredith, I have a question. On the uh, agenda, it has the owner, uh, he, the owner is Brenda Hagendorfer, and then I thought I saw owner uh, exit Clearwater. So the property is under contract. Um, it is still currently owned by Ms. Hagendorfer, and, um, but um, is under contract to exit Clearwater, LLC. Did, did, did the state owner exit Clearwater in, in the presentation? I believe. Page one? I, on page one of the staff's findings, I, but I believe that's a mistake. So we initially um, submitted with that name, but there has been an amended submittal for Ms. Hagendorfer. Okay. Can we have that corrected for consistency? Yes. Okay. Was that in the one spot only that you saw that, Mr. Ingwell? That's the only spot is right, right on this page. I okay. I see it right there in the applicant name. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, John, you'll get that amended uh, in the findings then, okay? Yeah, we'll have that amended for before it goes to the BCC, as they stated. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Thank you, Chair and Board. Uh, this uh, rezoning from Agricultural District, one, do one per 20 acres to medium density, um, 10 dwellings per acre. Um, consistent with the comprehensive plan under number, letter A, the proposed amendment to MDR is consistent with the intent and purpose of the DSAP land use plan category traditional garden as stated in the goal of future land use 16. The parcel in question is located under JB40 area, which is the Jack's branch. As uh, depicted in figure 2.1.A of the, um, the DSAP. Final land use plan of the DSAP for the proposed of the allowed densities. Those areas have designated specific development numbers as shown under the program calculations in section 2.02 of the development program of the Muskogee DSAP document. Should the amendment be approved, any proposed development on site will be required to address and meet the residential design guidelines and standards as specified in the plan, section 3.02 residential guidelines and section 3.03 .03 of the conservation neighborhood guidelines. If approved, the amendment would ensure the compatibility of the underlying zoning and designated land use plan. Uh, criteria B, uh, consistent with the land development code, the proposed amendment to MDR is consistent with the intent and purpose of the land development code. The MDR zoning district allowance are compatible with the DSAP land use designation of traditional garden. There is no proposed development for the parcel at this time. When developed is proposed, a maximum residential density of 15 dwelling units will be implemented as stated in section 3.05 of traditional garden guidelines. Traditional garden neighborhoods are typically located within one fourth to one half mile from a town, village, or neighborhood center. These neighborhoods are intended to provide tra transition between suburban garden and traditional village districts. Housing includes a variety of attached and detached residential units. 
with a higher mix of attached products. Blocks should be in the form of a more traditional grid and a grid that may be used where influenced by environmental conditions, parks or other public spaces are encouraged to serve as a focal point of these neighbors. Under criteria C, compatible with surrounding uses, the proposed amendment is compatible with the surrounding existing uses in the area. Within 500 feet radius area, the staff observe properties within zoning districts, agricultural, HDR, high density residential, and MDR, medium density residential. All properties within the DSAP boundary and surrounding the parcels are designated under the traditional village and suburban garden. Under criteria C, spot zoning, the parcel is under the adopted Midwest Excambia County Sector Plan. As such, the detailed specific area plan guidelines identify both locations and uses that are compatible with the goals and objectives of the sector plan and therefore not considered spot zoning based on the community design principles used to develop the plan. The specific location as predetermined and assigned a conservation neighborhood land use. Findings uh, for criteria E, um, appropriate change in changing conditions, the land use or development conditions within the area surrounding the property of the rezoning have changed. The adoption of the Midwest Sector Plan, a long range planning document provides for coherence and sustainable development patterns within the central Excambia County. Emphasizing urban from form and the protection of regional resources and facilities, the site designation under the land use plan conservation neighborhood or traditional fulfills the development guidelines under the community design principles and supports adopted goals, objectives and policies of the sector plan. That is all staff's findings. All right, thank you, John. Board members, any questions of staff? Okay, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and move into a public comment portion. For those members of the public who wish to speak on the matter, please note the planning board bases the decisions on the approval conditions and, and exceptions described in 2-7.2 of the Land Development Code. During our deliberation, the planning board does not consider general statements of support or opposition. Accordingly, please limit your testimony to those approved conditions and exceptions. Please also note that only those individuals who are here today and give testimony on the record will be allowed to speak before the subsequent uh, BCC meeting. Mr. Rick Weeks, please. Morning, sir. If you'll be sworn in and state your name and address for the record. Your name and address for the record, please, sir. My name is Rick Weeks. I live at 5061 East Lake Road in Milton. Okay. Thank I'm you, here sir. because I'm the president of the Pensacola Rifle and Pistol Club. And in the interest of being good neighbors, I'm, my only concern is as this land use goes forward that people will know if we exist because we're a 250-member club very active and somewhat noisy. We want to be good neighbors, but we, don't want to, we own 148 acres up there, and we've been there a long time. And we just want to make sure that everybody knows we're there before they come in and, and develop. Just in all fairness for everybody, that's it. That's the only thing I have. Just to make everybody okay. know we're there. <laughs> all right. Thank you, sir. Horace, are there any requirements, or John, are there any real estate disclosures that we have when it's surrounding something that produces a, a lot of noise and things like that. I know we do that in the case down by the base if you're in specific right. zones, but. Uh, that, uh, that's a very good question, and we don't. I, we, we don't have anything, but I do know, I, they have been there a long time. Uh, um, and, 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 and any, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Reed Rushing, he knows any good real estate agent whomever purchase they're going to do a surrounding impact and, and and make sure that the neighbors are aware of any adverse or press before they purchase a piece of property out there any good real estate agent will do that uh, should anyway but we just don't have nothing from the county that discloses that fact okay all right thank you for disclosing that sir we appreciate it absolutely very good it's for the record <clears throat> okay. Could, is I, there, could I ask a question? Yes. Go ahead, sir. Uh, would you would your property be visible on the on one of the maps that we that have been up there? Could you pull the map up and point it out? Very top of the map in the center. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you, sir. And John, put, go, go, go back. Put, put that weather on the map too, because I want to think. I want to. I want to add something. And also too, if you can see, even even if that property is developed, there's some. Ex that's a general wetland map. So basically, there will be some type of a severe buffering as well, wooded buffering, so that they because they can't impact all of those wetlands when it's developed. So all of that that, that buffering will have to be there as from, from from a visual impact of the of the area. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Ingwell? Okay. That's it. All right. Is there anyone else from the public that wishes to speak on this matter? All right, sir, come forward. I didn't fill out a pink sheet, so I'm not sure where it ended up. What was your name? I'm sorry. Richard Dye, D-Y-E. We'll look for it while you speak, and go ahead and be sworn in and state your name and address for the record. Yes. Okay. Sir, your name and address for the record. My name is Richard Dye. My address is 2145 Matheson Road, Contonement, 32533. Um, part of my concern is we did not see this sign until yesterday when we went for a walk. Um, it is put at the end of the road behind the mailbox where virtually nobody sees it on a dirt road. Now, I'm not sure if the buffer should be 500 feet or 2,500 feet because it's north of Nine Mile, but where this is a in only street with no other exits at this time, I think that more of us should have been aware of this situation or what was going on here. Um, we do know that there was surveying taking place earlier in the year and everybody is tight-lipped about it. Um, so we know no information. Now, I'm not sure how the zoning goes, but when we bought our home in October of last year, it is zoned single residence zone. And everything out there home-wise is two acres or greater for a home. So I don't see how to me, this is urban sprawl. We bought out there because we wanted to be out away from everybody. So you come in and try to put 500 units where we're currently half a unit per acre to go to 10 or 15 units per acre, that's a huge difference. Uh, we won't address the traffic, we won't address the commercial, but I feel like this has been kind of kept tight-lipped and secret, not out and announced. We've gotten nothing in the mail about it. Um, we're certainly, we're more than 500 feet, but probably less than 1,000 feet because 2,500 feet is just under half a mile. We're a half a mile off of Highway 29. So I don't think this has been advertised or marketed. We went to the next street over, which is just one street north of us. There is no signage on that one that it's gonna be changed either. So um, we, we moved out there to be away from everything. And if the plans that we've seen are correct, they're gonna be putting houses or multi-dwelling units on pocket lots right in front of our house across the street. So I think this is, maybe phase one of something, but we have concerns mostly because nobody out there knows that this is going on because of where that sign was placed. If you look at the picture, it's on the dirt road. It's even off of the pavement of where most people would travel and see it. If you're going to the gun club, you would see it because the gun club is down that road and there's a few homes down that road, but anyhow, that's all I have to say for right now and okay. I'd like to see where this goes. Sir, are you within 500 feet of the property? I don't honestly know what the property line is going to be and where they're going to do this because we've received no packets. I tried to look at that map, but there is two houses between us and the end of the road. Let's pull the map up, please, so we can take a look. And instead, we did find your sheet, by the way. It was just uh, in another stack here. So. Okay, thank instead, you. And staff, the requirements, a uh, mailer for within 500 feet? Because it's no north of Nine Mile, um, it's a 2,500-foot buffer. Um, when I do put it in our GIS map, there are only 20 results uh, within 2,500 square feet, and a lot of them are owned by the same people. Uh, so there were only 10 that were actually sent out within 2,500 square feet. Er. So just John Fisher, clarification. You know, the reason we had the 2,500 foot buffer versus the 500 foot because in the north side there's a lot larger landowners and that's so you, we're not going to get that many even with 2,500 feet sometimes. Um, this is a large parcel and as you can see there's really nothing there's no way to get to the property itself it's a private road. Um, we posted it on the most public uh, public road that we could find to the entrance of the of the site. That is all the code requires and state statute requires. Can, can we clarify where this parcel is exactly or? 
Yeah. So let, let me let me do this. Um, let's pull up a little bit bigger map of the area. I, I'm very familiar with this area because I live out here and I have friends that live on Matheson. So, but I think what you're talking about is you're off of Matheson. Is that correct? Where you where you're located? Yes, the paved portion. We're on the paved portion. Of okay, Madison. and then it goes around the corner and it turns to dirt. Our houses, you have the multiple mailbox and it turns left and goes down. Then you jump. go into the entrance to the pistol club and yeah. to the right is that's a private road if I if I'm correct. Yeah. But let's just pull up a little broader map so we can understand what we're looking at here. I noticed on that last depiction they had a 500 foot buffer, so maybe when we're north of Nine Mile, per the rules of a 2500 foot buffer, maybe we should depict a 2500 foot buffer uh, on the depiction. We'd have to zoom out to the point you probably wouldn't be able to see hardly any detail. At least notate that it was a 2500 yeah. foot mailing right. radius sense. there. Okay, so. Matheson Road is where you're located. The John Wilson Road, is that, it says road, but is that a private road? Is that what that is? Okay. It is. So that's not county owned, county maintained. That's owned by the individuals on that, that property. So basically an easement on their property. Is that correct? Can we do the satellite view? Uh, do we have that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not loading very fast, so. You didn't listen to that recording that came up a little bit ago is what it was. <laughs> they knew the question was coming. That's right. Okay. So here's the subject proper here's the subject property here. And I'm gonna try to zoom out, hope it doesn't go too so Mathis Road's right up here. Okay. So we so had we posted a sign up here where my cursor is. And there's a dirt road that comes all, it's John Wilson Road that comes down through here to get to there. And where was the sign posted? Right here in this corner where the mailboxes are for, so everyone on this street should be, you know, I'm not sure if all the mailboxes are there, but there's a mailbox kiosk right here. So the mailbox kiosk is for anybody down that dirt lane road. Okay. Um, and so you're saying this proposal is actually gonna be south of the gun club? Yes. As you can see, so here's the gun club here. This is Quintet Road that's not developed yet. So you can see here's East Quintet, which is developed. Mm -hmm. This um, is West Quintet, which, you know, maybe one day will be developed um, out to the gun club. Okay. And the parcel is just to the south of that right here. That's highlighted in red. So do we know what the proposed access to this property is going to be? There's been no proposals at this time. This is just strictly a rezoning case. Okay. Is there access off of this road also from Well Line Road? Go to the south some? No. Um, we had looked um, about trying to come up that way to post a sign and stuff like that, but it's it's stopped somewhere through here. You can't get through. This is just all just dirt road through here trails okay as the gentleman stated the kiosk at the north there matheson road and john wilson is where the people um that live um i believe here somewhere down through here this is where their mailboxes are up here this is where we posted the sign at the end this is it's a private road so we're not allowed to travel down private roads can you drop a 2,500 foot marker on here from the center of the property? Knowing where the property is, we're going to be more than the 2,500 feet from that property there. Um, when we talked to surveyors, they were surveying a lot closer to us and across the street from us. So does this have any connection with that? Is this a stage one type thing? And there'll be phase two, phase three rollout later on? Or is this just a one-time shot for this parcel? So this is a zoning request just for this parcel. We're, we're not privy to the development plans. If okay. that would go through, you could call the county and 
discuss with them any proposed development plans for the area? And just because you said various, you don't know who to set. It could be, we don't know if it's for this project, somebody else is doing it. So, so we don't have no way of knowing that at this level. Um, it could be it could be another project that's doing some surveying out there. It doesn't have to be necessarily associated with this project, or it could be. We just don't know at this time. Okay. Well, that was my main concern is we didn't have any information or idea of where it was and being where the sign was posted. Um, again, the not knowing is what was the important part. Okay. Thank you. And personally, the 2,500 foot depiction does help me out. Okay. Anyone else who hasn't spoke, spoken already that wishes to speak? All right, hearing none, we'll hereby close the public comment portion of the hearing and come back, Ms. Crawford, some closing statements or additional information from you. Absolutely. So, um, as staff has stated, and we're in agreement with, this request meets the criteria of the Land Development Code. Absolutely. It complies with the law, it complies with state statutes and local regulations, and we would ask that you grant our request. Okay. Board members, Chair will entertain a motion or further questions. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, case number Z 2021-11 based on staff findings. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries unanimously on that one. Okay. We'll go right into our next case, which is Z 2021-12. Same agent, Ms. Meredith Crawford. This case, agent for Cottonmouth Customs, LLC, who is the owner, 9720 and 9722 Highway 98 West, 17.86 acres and 1.68 acres from HDMU, High Density Mixed Use District, 25 dwelling units an acre, to Commercial District, which is also 25 dwelling units per acre. Members of the board, has there been any ex parte communication between you, the applicants, agents, attorneys, witnesses, general public? Have you visited the subject property and are you a relative or business associate to any of the parties? And Steve? No to all. Thank you. No to all. No to all. No to all. Very familiar with the location. All right, Chairman, no to all. No to all. No to all. No to all. All right, thank you. Staff was noticed at the hearing posted on. Um, excuse me, was notice of hearing sent to all interested parties? Yes. All right, thank you. Was it also properly posted on the subject site? Yes. Okay. Meredith, any opposition to the maps and photography? Okay, she's indicated she's okay. Drew, are you doing this one? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll, I'll and you were here when we swore everyone in at the beginning of the meeting? I was. Okay, all thank right. you, sir. Go ahead, please. Sure. I. Still need to get on the record, Andrew Homer, Division Sir, uh, Manager, Development Services Department. Okay, so we are here. This is rezoning case Z 2021-12. This is our location map. As you can see, it's on the north side of West Highway 98, west of Blue Angel Parkway intersection. This is the zoning map. The current zoning on these two parcels is HDMU. You, could you go back, please? Thanks, sorry. Um, as you can see, there is a large amount of acreage to the east and to the south there that is zoned commercial. The current uses on that are residential. There's platted residential subdivision. There's also platted uh, mobile home subdivision and you also have unplatted land um, that is being split up into lots that predates just about every bit of our land development code and to the south you see heavy commercial light industrial and commercial west highway 98 is a primary uh, or excuse me a major arterial roadway This is existing land use, as you can see, that you do have that residential component, even though you have z commercial zoning off to your east. These two parcels, the larger one is currently vacant and wooded. 
Um, the smaller one within it has a vacant commercial building. It had been a restaurant uh, multiple times over the years. Um, that restaurant was built according to the property appraiser's office in 1980. Um, its overall size is a, just over 7,000 square feet, which in the current HDMU zoning would actually require conditional use approval to get a building that size. Next. Next. Current future land use on site, mixed use suburban. This is a wetlands map from the 2006 National Wetlands Inventory. There are two water features on site. Um, obviously man-made, um, no idea how they, why they were put there. Probably some sort of drainage in that whole area. Um, that general area of the county was pitcher plant prairie at one point. And here we have an aerial map of the site. You can see at the southern portion, you've got the, uh, the smaller parcel with the existing commercial property on it. Immediately to its east, you've got storage units uh, in that whole commercial area. And then just above that is the um, part of the mobile home development that predates the code. Drew, on that picture, if you'll go back. Is that a structure to the north of the water there? Is that a home, or what is that? Nearest I could tell is some sort of a gazebo type feature. I gotcha. uh, went back in aerials. It was probably some sort of an entertainment sort of uh, amenity given the lake that's there. Okay. All right, a uh, public hearing sign was posted on site. That is look, that's okay. That's looking west. This is looking on to the site, so I posted the sign there at where the uh, property line for the, the western property line for the small parcel meets the larger. That's looking into it, looking north. And this is looking into that site, looking northeast. You can see where there had been a, a sign um, for the restaurant building that's back behind the palm tree there. Looking west again along Highway 98 across the frontage uh, for the larger portion of the parcel, that would be the bit to the right in the photograph. And that is looking back eastward along Highway 98. Thank you. And I will go through the uh, staff assessment here um, um hold on just a moment yes, drew let me go ahead and bring meredith up and let her do oh, her yeah. portion of it we're just doing the maps of photography to start with so do you have speakers uh we have quite a few speakers okay okay so um at this time again if you'll introduce yourself and state your name and address for the record sure meredith crawford 125 east intendentia street i'm an attorney with clark partington here on behalf of the owners, there are actually, this is similar to the last case, the properties are owned by, one is by Cottonmouth Customs, the other is under contract and is owned um, by the Sal Vernali Trust, just for clarification on that title page. All right. Thank and, you. And um, Meredith, did you receive a copy of the staff's rezoning uh, package and the findings of fact? I did. Okay. And do you understand that you have the burden of providing substantial competent evidence that the rezoning is consistent with the comp plan, furthers goals, objectives of that plan, and is not in conflict with the land development code. Yes. Okay. Thank okay. you. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, a logical and orderly development pattern shall require demonstration of each of the five criteria. First, being consistent with the comprehensive plan. As outlined, um, this comprehensive plan is MUS. And the requested rezoning is consistent with the um, future land use category um, and with all the goals, objectives, and policies of the future land use category. Based on the applicant's request, the parcel will be used for continuing the existing restaurant use and potential development of the other portion. Proposed operations are compatible with the listed range of allowable uses under the MUS flu. The flu category is intended for an intense mix of residential and non-residential uses while promoting compatible infill development and the separation of urban and suburban land uses within the category as a whole. The range of allowable uses include residential, retail and services, professional office, light industrial, 
recreational facilities, public, civic, and limited agriculture. As to criterion B, consistent with zoning district provisions, the proposed amendment to commercial is consistent with the intent and purpose of the land development code. The parcel, parcel is adjacent to commercial to the east and directly across the street from HCLI to the south. Many parcels along the US 98, How, Highway 98 corridor are commercial in nature. Further, the proposed amendment is able to meet location criteria requirements stated in section 3-210E3 and 4. The applicant is able to show documented compatibility due to the existing commercial use, also as infill development and due to site design. One other zoning district provision, um, compatibility with flu 1.1.9 of buffering. The, as you saw in the aerials, the parcel um, is wooded um, to a large degree and buffering would be addressed at the time of DRC review. Buffering from the commercial, I'm sorry, the residential properties um, there to the side. Criterion C, compatible with surroundings. The proposed amendment is compatible with surrounding existing uses in the area. The proposed uses can be conducted and operated in a manner that is compatible with adjacent properties and other properties in the immediate area. Within the 500 foot radius, the applicant has identified properties within zoning districts commercial, HCLI, and MDR. There are a number of parcels in the area with varied commercial uses to include an airport, hospital emergency room, grocery store shopping center, restaurants, retail sales and services. As far as um, criterion D goes, spot zoning, the amendment request, if granted, would not be considered spot zoning. The property is adjacent to commercial zoning. And as seen in the map, um, there's quite a bit of commercial in the area. And then appropriate with changed or changing conditions. The rezoning will result in a logical and orderly development pattern due to the fact that the parcel fronts a major roadway and is adjacent to other commercially zoned property and surrounded by commercial uses. So the, we agree with staff's findings that the area has not changed, but that this is consistent with the commercial use already existing in the area. And that would conclude, um, I believe, my presentation. Okay. Do you have any witnesses or any other information to provide? No, I don't have any other witnesses. Okay. Thank you. Drew? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> let me scroll down here. Staff assessment based on the approval conditions, those criteria. The first one, consistent with the comprehensive plan. The proposed amendment to COM is consistent with the intent and purpose of future land use category mixed use suburban as stated in our comprehensive plan. Mixed use suburban allows for a mix of residential and non-residential uses and promotes infill development. The parcel may utilize existing public roads, utilities, and infrastructure. Second one, uh, consistent with the zoning district provisions. The proposed amendment is consistent with the intent and purpose of the land development code. The proposed commercial zoning may be established only within mixed use suburban, which we are in, mixed use urban, or commercial future land use categories. The district is appropriate to provide transitions between areas zoned or used as high density mixed use and areas zoned or used as heavy commercial or industrial. Rezoning to com, com is subject to the same location criteria as any new non-residential use proposed within the com district. One of the parcels is vacant and heavily wooded while the other contains a vacant commercial building. The site is along a major arterial road, half a mile from an arterial arterial intersection, and can meet the location criteria based on infill development. Compatibility with surrounding uses. The proposed amendment is compatible with surrounding existing uses in the area. Within the 500 foot radius impact area, staff observed properties with zoning districts, medium density residential, commercial and heavy commercial light industrial. The intent of comm zoning is to allow more diverse and intense commercial uses than the neighborhood commercial allowed within the mixed use districts. To maintain compatibility with surrounding uses, all commercial operations within the commercial district 
are limited to the confines of buildings and not allowed to produce undesirable effects on the surrounding property. The request to COM would allow for the possibility of commercial small-scale retail that will be in line with the majority commercial zonings along this corridor. Uh, appropriateness if spot zoning. The requested zoning would not be considered spot zoning as the adjoining parcels to the east are zoned commercial and the parcels along Highway 98 are predominantly zoned for commercial use. Change conditions. The land uses or development conditions within the area surrounding the property of the rezoning have not changed. The nearby intersection of Blue Angel and Highway 98 West is a primary node of commercial activity and services for this portion of the county. Okay, thank you, Drew. Questions of staff at this point? I got a quick question. Yes, yeah. sir. Looking at the maps, we don't have the map for the future proposed um, zoning. You missed that map on the. Yeah, that's required with future land use changes by the state when we send them up. So we do that for all the future land use changes. So the proposed um, zoning map that you usually will have, you know, the proposed zoning it, map is not in the packet. Yeah, it just happened to have been included in the previous case. Um, we use those for future land use cases, not rezonings. Okay. Just imagine it the same color red. Right. Any other questions? All right. We're going to go ahead and open a public comment portion of the hearing. For those members of the public who wish to speak on this matter, please note that the planning board bases its decisions on approval conditions and exceptions described in 2-7 of the Land Development Code. The planning board does not consider general uh, comments of opposition or support. Please limit your testimony to only those items described in 2-7.2. And please also note that only those individuals giving testimony today will be allowed to speak at the Board of County Commission hearing. Samuel Lewins, Jr. Samuel Lucas, Sr. <laughs> uh, that's it looks a, like a J. It looks like a J. It's an SR. Sorry, sir. That's you. So come on up. <laughs> Maybe I need to get some glasses on up here. No be sworn in, please. Yes, I do. My name is Samuel Lee Lucas, Sr. I live at 321 Tallow Tree Drive. I have a little map, if you don't mind. I was asking earlier to try to get it to, that y'all can maybe look at this. It shows a little bit more. Than what you okay, if you'll here. present it to the staff there. Sorry, if you would. Sir, if you'll describe to us what the map is of and how you obtained it. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm referenced here for case number Z2021-12. I'm okay. against it totally. I have lived at hold, three... Hold on just a minute. Sorry. You're presenting evidence, and I have to qualify Sorry. it to bring it into the record. Okay. Does... What is the map, Drew, please? Okay, so this is a portion of... Um, it's a drawing that's showing a portion of the plat for Shangri-La Place. These, this is the uh, area to the immediate west and north of this. So this would be a map that would be available to the public. Is it something that we can bring up on the screen so that everyone can see it? Uh, yeah, we would have. I, it would, yeah. It would okay. take a bit. Sir, can you draw a parallel between that map and what is on the screen yeah, right now? Can we? I mean, Here, if he wants to bring it there? into evidence, that's fine. We just need to qualify what it is and where he got it from and then each individual will have to look at it. But if we can get it on the screen, it would be helpful. So, just so you know, but for right now, um, where it's, so this, this area over here, if you can see where the cursor, I'm moving it, it's this section of this subdivision, Shangri-La Place. And when you're looking at it, um, sir, do you, can I put an arrow on this to show them yeah, north? If you can if you, go north, it'll show a little bit better of what I'm going to reference to. Okay. There we go. I've added a north arrow on here for you. Okay. So you can orient it. Let's, 
now that we've qualified exactly what the gentleman is presenting, uh, Chair will entertain a motion to accept that as evidence uh, from Mr. Lucas Sr. Make a motion to accept. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that'll be marked as Lucas Exhibit 1. All right, sir, now that we have it in the record, go ahead. And I'm, I apologize. And my name is Sam, Samuel Lee Lucas, Sr. I live at 321 Tallow Tree Drive, Pensacola 32506. I live on the uh, west side of Shangri-La or Tallow Tree Drive. I've lived there since 1985 when I built my home. I've got several issues with this because of flooding, also of emergency vehicles going in and out. There's no procedures for that. The little road that you see beside the lake earlier, there's trash cans that come out every week. There is somebody living back on that road. That's where you said a little hut or a little shack. There is somebody living there because ever since 85, I've seen trash cans pulling out every time I put mine out. So there's somebody living there, but nevertheless, we have a, a trailer park that's to the east of where we live and a few years back they added to that trailer park and prior to that since 85 I never had any flooding or we didn't have hardly any flooding in the subdivision. Now Ginkgo is one road and then you have uh, Loquat. Loquat has had some flooding during that period of time. Once they put in the subdivision behind us to the west and also the subdivision extension for the mobile home, we have started more flooding coming across Ginkgo and coming up and flooding some of the houses on Ginkgo and on Loquat. Luckily, my home has never flooded, which I thank God. But we have a lot of flooding there. We have a ditch that runs the uh, east of, the, of our subdivision in between the plot that's wanting to be developed. There's a ditch there that I have tried to get cleaned out and I have a conflict of interest between the state, they say the county owns it, the county says the state owns it so nobody can do it. That ditch runs straight down to the houses that live on Ginkgo and it floods now because nobody has maintained it. But the ditch that runs down there and then heads back east and then it goes down or back north then there's a ditch behind the subdivision that goes all the way down to Perdido. That subdivision or that ditch has been a problem over the years because people use it as a dump. Uh, we don't have the county to go out but several times to clean it out. When they don't clean it out, we have a flood. Now during the heavy rain that we had here just recently back, Loquat and Ginkgo almost flooded. It flooded several homes, but it also flooded homes on Tallow Tree, where that ditch goes down from Highway 98 down to the back side of the ones on Ginkgo. So across the street from me, we had four houses to get flooded out. And that's because the ditch is not maintained, but we don't have the drainage going down from the other areas. I've got a problem with emergency vehicles. I fought not to have that extension done to the trailer park because they wanted to do fire trucks coming in and turning around. There's Sir, not let enough me just, room. Let me just interrupt you for just Sorry. a second. Not to discount the things that you're bringing forward because they're very important, especially to these residents out here. These items that you're discussing are not anything that we can make a vote on or do anything with. The zoning if we vote to recommend a change in the zoning, the piece of property is going to stay exactly like it is until they go through the development review process. And then that's where the traffic, the, uh, the flooding, the drainage, all of that is at that uh, portion. Now, you're certainly welcome to come back when it goes to the Board of County Commissioners and bring your concerns to their attention, which would be a separate issue from the rezoning, but now that you have it on the record, um, you could certainly do that because they'll have the most impact as to trying to help with the drainage, cleaning out the ditches and things like that. 
Um, so I just wanted to make sure you understood that those items, although very important, are not something that we really can look at. We have to look at those five criteria that were presented and um, you've entered this into the evidence and made record here. So uh, Horace, when they do the yes, development review process, any development on this property yes, would be required to controlling their own stormwater, uh, not making it worse in the area and any upgrades, any buffering requirements from the surrounding and, and so on like that. Yes, That's absolutely. another I, step in the process. I understand that, sir, but I've got a, a just a couple of things putting the board meeting in the morning on a work day, because I've talked to, we've got 70 plus homes out there. I've talked to about probably 35 people that live out there. They can't come because they're working. You would have had a lot more people here against this because number one, our property value is gonna go down the drain that much more. We've thought about this piece of property over here before, not to have it developed because of that. The flooding is a big issue. But the problem is, is not having the people come here and voice their opinions on a work day. I'm retired. I'm retired Coast Guard, and I'm also a retired investigator. I try to represent the families that are out there. I'm also their little bouncing board or whatever you want to do, say, off of this. But everybody that I've talked to says the same thing. They're against this 100%. It's going to cause problems. If it's approved, we've heard about mobile homes, campsites, tiki bar behind there. It is going to create another problem of breaking and entering and people that we've had the problems. If you look at the trailer park and you look at the arrest reports, you'll find out convicted felons live in those trailer parks right now, have been. We've had problems with break-ins at our house. And so those are issues that really need to be addressed before you've approved something to be built there. And it's going to be built there if y'all approve it. But I appreciate your time, effort, and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. William Thomas. Sir, please be sworn in and state your name and address for the record. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, my name is William Thames. I live at 552 Tallow Tree Drive. Uh, my property is just adjacent or borders the both of these properties. Um, I, I'm here basically, you know, to voice my opinion against this rezoning because of, um, you know, I, I looked at your, I looked, I reviewed your working documents, and it, it and it's uh, identifying an RV park. But then I've also uh, done some further investigation and looked at you know the current the owner's current business portfolio, his trends, and what he's planning to do to this business, and he's planning on opening a nightclub out of that current commercial biz business. All right, you got residents all the way down the street. Um, I don't know about you, but I don't particularly want to go outside and have to listen to thumping music at a lot at a nightclub all night long. I um, just want to voice my opinion against the commercial zoning. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ron French. Good morning, sir. Please stay, uh, be sworn in and state your name and address for the record. Yes. Thank you, sir. Name you, and address, you guys please. have to excuse me. I was uh, exercising this morning. I walked four and a half miles, but I remember we had this meeting. Um, You're fine. I'm sure we, we would uh, be right there with you if we could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my name is Ronald French. Uh, my property is 9813 Ginkgo Drive. And um, I'm like one of the, the third one at the end of the plot there at the corner. Um, where the cul-de-sac is. Okay. Keep going towards the right. Keep going right there. That's me. And then uh, the next door neighbor, and then in the cul-de-sac, at the end of the cul-de-sac, you have the other neighbor, uh, Greg. Uh, our property line runs right up towards that fence there, um, where he's at. There's a creek that runs behind there that runs all the way around out to Perdido, like Sam said. 
I've been there since 2000. That building that everyone is talking about, I watched it go from Catfish Cabin, Slips 98, Taste of India, and now I'm hearing a moonshine bar uh, coming. Uh, there are homes back there where that pond is. That's a fishing pond. My young boys used to go there. They're grown now. They're 30 and 26. Uh, there's a fishing pond back there. There's two homes back there that people live in, which Sam is talking about bringing trash cans there. I understand change is happening. I'm, I get it. But compatibility for the area for our side of, of 98, if you're going east, yes, all you see is businesses popping up. That uh, storage unit has been there for a long time, which is great because you got homes there. That's common sense. You got homes there, people going to move and put stuff in storage. But everything east of there, hospital, when I moved here, there was nothing there but a Dollar General and Winn-Dixie. Now you got McDonald's, Walmart, all of that going south, and then north is nothing but homes. You can't bring a business in there like that, and you have nothing but homes around there. Nothing. There's nothing but homes. Even trailer parks, like Sam said, all of our homes are in there. It's quiet still. I don't want to be dealing with all of that. I just don't. <laughs> I moved out there for one reason. It's a suburb still. It's still considered a little bit country to me, but I can get to the city if I need to, far as hospital, doctors, grocery store, whatever. I want to keep it that way. <laughs> I don't want to go to Cantonment. I don't want to go out to Beulah. I don't want to do any of that. I like where we are. It's quiet. Keep it that way. I mean, if you want to build all of that stuff, you go east of us. Because if you go any further west, there's nothing but homes. You have the true value, and that's it. I hear everybody talking about all the commercial properties, but that's east of us. That's nowhere near us. When dixie Hospital, I'm grateful for. I can come out of my subdivision and get in there if something should happen when my grandkids come over. But all of this, it makes no sense, none whatsoever. So I am against it, and I pray that you guys do the right thing and think about the people in the community and the subdivisions that surrounding it, because there's nothing but homes around that area. Thank right. you. Thanks, sir. Richard Dye. Well, he's got 2022-12 on here also. I think you had a, uh, an individual earlier that was died, but my last name is Mahan, M-A-H-O-N. -A I did submit a sheet. Sir, if you want to come forward and... Uh, be sworn in. Let's see if we can locate it here. Okay. Yes, sir. I do have have your sheet here. I apologize. It just That's got right. kind of mixed in. I'm it's confusing price. because we have rezonings and we also have regular planning board meetings. So, uh, all right, sir. If you'll be sworn in and state your name and address for the record. Yes. All right, your name and address, please, sir. My name is Richard Mahan. I live at 9843 Loquat Drive, Pensacola, Florida, 32506. I live in the Shingala subdivision, which is to the uh, north and to the uh, west of this uh, proposed uh, zoning change. I own three properties in, in uh, the subdivision. I have a house at 9843 Ginkgo Drive. I also own the vacant lot that falls within the buffer zone. That's why I received a letter. Uh, I'm against this because uh, once you take the uh, the zone and you change it to commercial, uh, if they're a failed venture uh, venture of uh, putting a proposed uh, RV park in there fails, that opens up that 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 area uh, to any other type of commercial business. Uh, our uh, our subdivision basically has a green belt that allows us to uh, get a little wind deflection from hurricanes. Uh, it's a noise buffer from everything else to the east of us that is commercial traffic in uh, Blue Angel and 98 Parkway. Uh, that there 
We also have an airfield. That airfield contributes a lot of noise. We get buzzed often by the, by the aircraft in there in our subdivision. Uh, so basically, we will lose that natural. natural. Uh, if you allow the commercial change and the, and the RV part to go through there, that's going to create an undesirable effect in our subdivision. From the corner of the, uh, of the line there, coming all the way down along Tallow Tree, my house is right through there. You're, you're, the map w proposed is like 40 camper sites right through there. We have a problem with drainage in that ditch, so that, that lot would have to be clear cut, and it does have more wet areas in there. It also has a house and a, and a mobile home that somebody resides in on, on that property. But if you clear cut that, we, we're going to have that elevation of that ground is higher than ours. We're going to have campers or whatever commercial business is looking into our backyards. We have no buffer. That ditch has never been maintained by the county, so the county would have to come in and move to claim the right away so they can claim it. And then you would have to have a bigger buffer between the commercial zone and us. So that really depletes a lot of that acreage use on that, on that territory over there. I live on the corner of uh, my house right up there, there. I built the second house in that neighborhood because I really enjoyed the peace and quiet of it. But uh, making a commercial uh, property out of that is going to contribute to more problems. It's going to lower our tax base. It's going to lower the value of our homes because of the because substantial flooding in there because you have to declare the flooding to the seller, uh, you know, to the buyer. The seller has to do it by law. There's no way around it. So it's really going to make an undesirable effect to the people wanting even to move into that location. Uh, my understanding is that the restaurant is going to be called Moonshiners. It's, uh, it's a nightclub atmosphere, but there's also telltales on the, on, the, on the local media that they desire to build a tiki bar. Again, if you open up that, that territory to commercial use, you're inviting everything and everything in the world to come in and really basically you know, interfere with the habitat of our subdivision, pepper tree, as well as the next one up. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Richard Dye, uh, he signed up to speak on the previous case, but as well for this one, so we're just giving him an opportunity. All right. Is there anyone else who hasn't already spoken that would wish to speak on this case? All right, hearing none, I'll hereby close the public comment portion. I do want to make something very clear again because I think we're kind of getting into apples and oranges here. The first thing is this board has no information about what is proposed on this property. We have no information about any RV park, bars, anything like that. That's not what we do. Our purview is the five criteria. If we could bring them up on the screen again, please, Rachel. Okay. This is the only thing by law that we are allowed to vote on, period. This is it. I'm not saying that all these concerns that you have are invalid. I'm just telling you we only have a limited purview that we vote on. At this point, according to the staff's findings and the applicant, it's met, it is consistent with all of these five criteria. Now, that might make you mad, but I'm just telling you is that's not our purview. There's the Development Review Committee, which is also a public hearing. A lot of the issues I'm hearing is drainage. That's completely out of this board's purview. I wish we had control over it, believe me, because a lot of people come forward with those concerns. But I just want you to understand that when we're voting on this, we're not ignoring some of the things that you say. We have a very limited scope that we have to look at when we make these decisions. We have to consider everything or anything that is permissible in that zoning district when we look at it. They could tell us what it's going to be. It doesn't matter because we have to consider if they change their mind or they decide to go a different direction. We have to look at everything. So that's why we come back to these five approval criteria. And I will tell you it shows consistent in all those categories at this point. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone from the general public understands that this is a very specific process. 
So uh, with that, Meredith, did you have some closing statements before the board takes action? Uh, simply that we do meet the criteria as outlined in the Land Development Code and the request is consistent with state law and local law. We would ask that you grant our application or recommend that the board grant our application. Okay. Board members, any questions or comments uh, from the applicant or staff? All right, Chair, we'll entertain a motion or further questions. I move to approve. Okay, based on staff's findings and yes. the presented yes. evidence. All right, thank you, sir. Yes. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously uh, to recommend approval based on the findings of facts and the criteria. Okay. Our next case is uh, a rezoning case is going to have to be put uh, into recess for just a moment because we do have to go over to our regular planning board meeting and address an issue of a small scale amendment uh, before we go into that. So I'm going to hereby put the rezoning hearing into recess and hereby open the regular planning board meeting this is the regular planning board meeting for November 2nd. We do have a quorum. Um, do we have proof of publication of the regular planning board meeting? Yes, sir. Okay. Does that publication meet all of the legal requirements? Yes, sir. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to waive the reading of the legal. So moved. Second. Motion second. Do we have uh, everyone in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. You've been previously provided the planning board meetings from the prior meeting. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections to those meeting minutes? Hearing none, Chair will entertain a motion to accept as is. So moved. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. You've been provided the planning board regular hearing package and the legal advertisement um, the chair will entertain a motion to accept that hearing package and the legal advertisement into evidence. Do we have a motion? So motion. Moved. Motion and a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so we will now go into the small scale public hearing small scale 202103 this is a public hearing concerning the review of an ordinance amending the future land use map and who is presenting on behalf of the staff this morning <coughs> john okay uh chair if we have meredith go ahead and speak she's got a um look to continue a presentation this. okay mm -hmm. meredith in this case if you'll just introduce yourself and and um then you can go ahead with the presentation sure meredith crawford 125 east and tendencia street um, we have this small scale amendment and the corresponding rezoning and at this time we're going to ask to continue both okay um, we've conferred with staff and with mr jones and they're in agreement with us delaying the case to bring back at a later date okay motion to accept the request for continuation so moved Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so that's the public hearing on the small scale. And now we'll go back into session in the rezoning uh, meeting. And now we're back on the record. So again, if you'll state your name and address for the rezoning and the same request. Sure. Meredith Crawford, 125 East and Tendencia Street. Um, on behalf of the applicant, we are requesting to delay this hearing on the rezoning, uh, asking for that continuance, and staff has uh, agreed. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to accept so the moved. applicant. All right. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries for continuation. Thank so, you. all right. Thank you. All right. Okay, is there any additional uh, information or cases for the rezoning meeting? Do we have anything else? All right, hearing none, we will go into uh, adjournment on the regular, excuse me, the rezoning meeting. And now I'll hereby call back to order the regular planning board meeting 
and we will move into our next case, which is a public hearing concerning the review of future land use SSA 202105 at the board review and recommend to the Board of County Commissioners for adoption uh, an ordinance amending the future land use map small scale amendment. And Bob Ward, I think, is going to be uh, the agent for the applicant in this case. Who's presenting on behalf of the staff? Me, John Fisher. Okay. John, if you'll go ahead and just give us a background on it, and then we'll give Mr. Ward an opportunity to also give us his information. Sure. So these current uh, properties are, um, let me get the site up in front of me here. Um, so there's actually three parcels here um, that we're going to be looking, or not three parcels, but three owners. Um, the first one that we'll be looking at right now, I believe is, um, is this Southeastern? Southeastern Pipe and Precast of Florida. Um, we'll also have American Concrete Supply, and we'll also be in C Holding, which will be the last one. So Mr. Ward is going to be doing all three of these. He's the agent for this applicant. This is currently a um, concrete construction site. Um, it has precast places on it. They have concrete storage on there. It acts as an industrial use already. Um, when we did the conversion of the 2030 maps for future land use, this was kind of missed when we did the conversion. So we're going back. Um, the owners are wanting to get this all in compliance, the future land use um, map. So it's mixed use suburban currently right now, and they want to make it compatible. So they, if there's any sales or anything in the future, they are 100% compliant. Um, they are 100% grandfathered in. They're working today, um, and all uh, there's five total parcels. Um, in question, the southeastern pipe and precast is the northern parcel which we are looking at. The American Concrete Supply, which is the next case, is two parcels which will be in the middle. Uh, B and C Holdings are two small parcels on the corner of Quintet and Highway 95 on the southwest side. Um, just trying to put everything together here. Um, I'm not sure if we have any speakers on this one um, about possible expediting this if there is no speakers. Um, again, this is not, there's nothing proposed for this site. This is basically a change of just making compliant with what is existing out there. Um, I can go through the location wetlands map just to get a quick background here. Um, so this is for the first one, 05. You can see the area. This is um, the current zoning of 8 CLI, so it does have a um, zoning for it. Um, this is the future land use as mixed use suburban. You can see there is some industrial already on the site. Uh, the right side, the eastern side of the property um, that you see the right of way there, that is actually a railroad track. Uh, just to let you know there is a buffer of a railroad track all along there. Um, this is the proposed and um, industrial future land use to make it compatible. This is showing the site that's currently, you know, being used as a industrial site. This is the public hearing sign. Public hearing sign. So we posted, since it's on two roads, on Highway 95 and Chipper Road, we posted a sign on each road. This is looking west of Highway 95A, south of Chipper Road. Looking north from South Chipper Road. Looking east along South Chipper Road. And looking north along Highway 95A. And looking south along Highway 95A. Looking west at St. Matthew's Lane from Highway 95A. And that's all the maps and photography that we have. Okay. Basically equals some housekeeping. There's absolutely no impact of change in use. No. Um, and just FYI, um, we do have three applications for the rezoning for next month, December, to um, go to industrial. The zoning right now is 8 CLI. They want to make it compatible industrial. So we're looking to, you know, the, the opposition is to have an opposition, but to make everything industrial compatible, future land use and zoning, 100% compatible all around. Okay. Um, I just need clarification. Uh, Mr. Ward, if you'll come forward, please, sir.
Okay. Um, I see that we have, is it uh, C.R. Campbell? C.R. Campbell. C.R. Campbell. Is Mr. that Campbell. one of your witnesses in behalf of your case? Yes, uh, he is on his way here. He was here earlier. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because, like Mr. Fisher said, sometimes when there's not members of the public in opposition and it's more of a housekeeping thing like this, we can kind of use an expedited uh, format to keep moving. So just wanted to make sure he's a uh, part of your case. Yes, ma'am. Um, I wanted to be, I might have put down the wrong number. Rebecca Perry? Okay. Okay. All right, I have your sheet here. Um, yes, now you you had signed up for 07? I think so, yeah. Okay, did you wish to also, we're, we're right now on 05. Yeah, well, 05 is the one. I was just, I didn't understand how to. Okay, so you do oh, wish to speak on this one? Okay, yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, we'll absolutely give you the opportunity to speak. Um, Bob, if you want to go ahead and make an opening statement, and then we'll give the lady a chance to uh, give an up uh, speak. Um, do I need to be sworn? No, uh, we're not in quasi-judicial anymore, so we don't have to be sworn in. Okay. State who you are, if you would, please. My name is Robert Ward, 9909 North Cove Avenue, Pensacola, 32534. Most people call me Bob. <laughs> what our request here on all three parcels, 05, 06, and 07, if I can cover the try to explain to you what it we'll have to take each one of them individually but comments in general you can describe that'll be fine okay the reason they're in three parcels or five parcels with three owners originally it was a 64 acre parcel that was later split into the various parcels that are that are in existence today the 64-acre parcel was approved by the county in 1999 as industrial usage under GID zoning, which is not in existence today. The future land use at that time was AA15, which allowed industrial. Changes were made down through the years, and what we have now is HCLI with future land used to mixed use suburban, which does not allow any industrial activity at all. So we have a dilemma. We're trying to get it straightened out. And that's where we are here today. The same thing applies to all three cases, 05, 06, and 07. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Okay. Ms. Perry, we'll go ahead and have your comments now and, and um If you'll just introduce yourself and give us your address, please. My name is Rebecca Perry. I live at 200 South Chipper Road in Cantonment. Thank you. Um, this concrete factory or whatever is right across the street from my house. When they built it, they did put a buffer. Uh, we, my husband, who is now deceased, um, came to the meeting then and tried to, to talk them out of it at that time. We have never been involved in anything, coming to any of these meetings. It's the first time he ever did anything like that, and I don't think he knew what was really going on. And this is my first time to ever be here um, because I saw the sign and I knew they were gonna be either changing something and I wanted to come and find out what it was. I've talked to several of my neighbors and we're all concerned. Um, if this change goes in place for that parcel, how is it gonna affect my property? Um, they are, I mean, this, is, this place makes all kinds of noise. I raised my grandsons there. God gave me this little piece of property that I have, and I will die there unless they run me out with industrial stuff. I don't know what this means for me, and that's my concern. I don't know anything what these words mean, this uh, definitions of card room and paramutual, and I don't understand all that. And heavy commercial, what does that mean for my property? Okay. And the lady, Diane Lowry, is my neighbor. She has an equine rescue. Um, site right across the street from me and she would have been here today we'd planned to come together but she had an, an emergency doctor visit she had to go to um, so I was just here trying to find out what I you know what I, what I can do if I can do anything or to know what the future holds for where I'm at 
Okay. Well, let's see if we can get you a couple answers. John, maybe you can explain okay. how the zoning and the future land use categories work together and... Okay. Um, um, the zoning category now, 8 CLI, it means heavy commercial light industrial. Um, we're not here today for that part. Um, what we're here today is for the comprehensive plan, which is basically like another layer of zoning that the state kind of oversees. The, um, it's currently called mixed use suburban, which allows basically just for commercial activity and residential. It doesn't allow for any industrial uses. This property has um, been an industrial site with the old future land use. So every you know, 10 years we go through and we update our future land use categories. Um, this used to be a future land use category of AA15, as Mr. Ward stated, which allowed for his use that he had on the property. When they did the change, this is something that was not transitioned over properly. It should have been changed, to, instead of mixed use suburban, it should have been changed to industrial. Um, at this time, there's no proposal to change anything on the site. This is basically just changing the color of the map um, from the beige to a purple industrial use so if they go to sell the property or if they go to you know basically they're making them compatible with the, the county the county will you know basically says you know you need to be compatible for any new type of uses or expanding their operation so there has been no proposals as i said they're just trying to clean up what they have um, to make it a compatible um, use for that site so it's basically going from a mixed-use suburban, which, again, is commercial, which should have never been transitioned like that in the past at all. It should have been, it was already yes, industrial. That's what my husband was fighting for back then when he, when he came. He, wasn't, he didn't know how to say it or how to, <clears throat> how to word what he was trying to get across. Um, but Mr. Campbell, I know, was the owner of the property at the time, and he was very nice to us. He came and talked to my husband outside and told him he would leave up a buffer and you know, said he brings some dirt over and put in our back property and things like that. And that was all well and good. But, I mean, we weren't looking farther down the road of what that's going to do to our property. And I was raising my three grandsons at the time. Now they're, they're away and I'm by myself now. But, um, I mean, is this going to mean that other people can come in and try to change zonings if so, they buy property and make it more industrial well, around it? Every property has its own zoning case. That's why he has five properties here, uh -huh. three owners. So um, each property has to go through this. He's just, what they own, he's just representing as an agent for these property owners that are in that 67 acre overall yeah. area. So he's just trying to get them, where there's an industrial site already there, He's just trying to make sure it reads in language he is an industrial site, where right now he's saying he's not, it's not reading as an industrial site. It's I reading understand it. that. So that's, we're here just to change the language. My question. It's not changing your property. My property. But if the person that lives across the street from me uh, dies and her son decides to sell the property, could that pr person come in and change that they to industrial? Would, the owner would have to come into this venue here and uh -huh. have to do, request the same type of thing. Uh -huh. And it would be much more difficult because there's not an existing industrial site on there. This is an existing industrial site. If it's a residential home to industrial site, they would have to go through this, a development review process, which has to deal with stormwater access. They have to go through a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to go. They don't I have understand. to go through that I part. understand. We used to ride my horses back there where he's got the, 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 the concrete plant now. Okay. And, you know, he, I, I, I didn't see a problem with it at the time except for noise and the ruckus and there's still a lot of noise um but you know there's nothing i can do about it now but i just wanted to find out how that would affect my my area and down our street yeah. if other people can come in and change all uh, that anyone can set, apply for an application and try to change their property anywhere yeah. in the county okay this is just the avenue to make his what is on the the property itself existing to make it compatible with what our code says okay so he He's kind of, it's kind of backwards because it's kind of grand, it's a grandfathered in is what we say. Yeah, I John, would it, would it be fair to say that this is just basically fixing a mistake that this is a house it cleanup. should have been yes. 
the, it should have been this way in the beginning, but somehow it didn't get transitioned. Yeah. Anything they do in the future, they would have to come back and ask for different and permissions. And we as a community a, would have to come here. Yes, and yes you would have that again. opportunity, yes. Okay. So Thank just, you for your time. I that's, appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. We appreciate you coming and participating. Okay. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on this case? I don't have anyone else signed up. Okay. Bob, did you want to wait on Mr. Campbell? Is he on his way? Is he coming in? or? He is on his way. Let me ask you a question. Since he is not here, we did fill out a sheet for him. Does yeah, and we're not in quasi-judicial okay. here, so he'll he'll be allowed to speak. I he don't. Can speak, uh, he can speak. I mean, he, he can speak at the BCC. He can speak at the BCC definitely. Yeah, yeah it's only quasi-judicial because we're verbatim recording everything. Then, so yep. that no new evidence can go there. But this is different. So, okay, uh, board members, you've heard uh, the applicant and the staff's explanation of what we're doing. We'll have to take these cases one at a time. So with the first one, SSA 202105, Chair will entertain a motion on that one. I move to approve the change to SSA 202105. All right. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Key is it in your opinion that based on all the evidence we've already heard that we can take a motion on the other two, just based on this same information and the staff's uh, findings? Yes, that would be fine. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion on SSA 202106 with the same findings and uh, information from the applicant. I move to approve it. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the last one, 2021-07, 20, the same thing, all the same information and testimony. All those, uh, excuse me, motion on this? Move to approve. All right, second. 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 All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. There you go, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All, all right. Members, I appreciate it. Great seeing you again. Good luck to you. Okay, uh, we are now going to go into a public hearing concerning the review of a development agreement for Leeward Subdivision Phase 3 LLC that the board review and recommend to the Board of County Commissioners for approval to development agreement between the Leeward Subdivision Phase 3 LLC and Escambia County to vest certain conditions agreed to by both parties in accordance with procedure and requirements of the Florida statutes. Staff members, I, I know we have an attorney here representing uh, the, the applicant. Uh, do you have any background that you want to give us before we hear from the gentleman? It just depends on how in-depth you want the background to go. We had met with everyone here uh, at the planning board. Um, there was this resolution thought through the submittal of a master plan okay. uh, to essentially, should this all go through, be lock in their density and uh, the rest of it I'll just sorry if you have any questions okay all right well we'll we'll come back to you in case we do good morning sir if you'll come forward Mr. Dunaway if you'll just introduce yourself and uh, go ahead and give us a little background thank you Mr. Chairman members of the planning board my name is Will Dunaway with the law firm of Clark Partington 125 East Intendencia representing um, the applicant, um, the other party to the development agreement with the uh, Escambia County. Um, as Mr. Homer abbreviatedly explained, um, this has been an extensively negotiated development agreement with the uh, county staff, uh, working very closely with them uh, and with um, Navy representatives to ensure that the densities and the vested rights for the property owner are preserved. The development order does that. Uh, it puts in place uh, the agreement for a logical um, development process over the number of years, and it is in keeping with both uh, Escambia County ordinances and uh, specifically state law. It is also um, fully compatible with the Land Development Code. Again, I'm here for any questions uh, and any elaborate information that Mr. Homer and or staff or any members of the board might have. Thank you. Okay. So as, as I mentioned, um, they have submitted a master plan 
uh, as part of your packet, we do have a proposed draft, if you will, development order. They are going to development review committee tomorrow um, to see if they can get that master plan locked in. Okay. Okay. And Kia, thank you for closing the door. Uh, just wanted to get on the record, um, county legal has reviewed and is okay with, with the agreement that's presented? Yes, that's correct. We are going to have a fully executed version for the Board of County Commissioners meeting this week. We're just waiting for the master plan to be reviewed tomorrow at DRC. Okay, all right. Board members, questions? I think uh, most of you were here uh, when the individuals came before the planning board and gave some testimony on, uh, on the property out there. Can I just ask our good Navy representative if he's in agreement as well? Yes. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chair, uh, I actually have met, I've met with Kia and Drew um, and Mr. Pepler a couple times uh, as our as the NAS representative. The development order in, it, from our standpoint is not ideal. Um, it, it does allow development that otherwise would not be allowed. Uh, but because of the situation and how we got here, it's it's certainly acceptable, at you know at this point. Um, regardless of what the land development code says, it's still in APZ two. Uh, it still has it's still in noise zone two, um, and that won't change. Uh, you know the land development code essentially is our police power to make recommendations. Um, so in this case, uh, it's that that part is not going to change. The Navy's going to fly where the Navy flies. Uh, there's, we, we have the ACUS program to protect pilots, protect people on the ground, and that's where density comes into play. Um, in this case, uh, we, of course, going to move forward. This is a, essentially a county uh, agreement. It's not with the Navy. Uh, we make recommendations. Um, so moving forward, you know, the, we're, we're certainly a, a partner with the county, and we want to be good neighbors. Uh, so... That's where we're at. All right. Thank you, sir. Board members, Jay, did you have something? Are there going to be any special disclosure requirements uh, for future homeowners in this area? So um, your next item that you're looking at is re repeal and replace on essentially a combination of our airfield um, sections of the land development code, not just around the base, but around airfields in general. Disclosure notices will still be part of it going forward as if, if this subdivision had been platted 20 years ago before we had those um, notice requirements and the houses had been built and somebody were to sell one now, they're underneath one of those disclosure things, it's still going to be a notice. Yes, it's the, the property is still under AIPD2 and has been for since 2003. 2003, that's correct. And uh, that, is, that is a recommendation under that, under AIPD2. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Just to clarify, like, for instance, when we talked about this last time, I live in a subdivision that I did sign that uh, because it was platted uh, prior to uh, my subdivision. I think Karen's Forest is another one. This one, I think the uh, owner developer is probably punished for not platting at the time he proposed uh, that particular extension. Maybe that's not 100% accurate, but that's why, if you recall, last time we were going back and forth, I'm like, well, wait a second. You, you know, we have other subdivisions. I get the Navy's uh, concern and don't disagree with that. I, uh, just I, I kind of I get it so there are other it's a weird we're in a weird spot over there you know and I enjoy the planes quite frankly I just don't uh, want I, one in my kitchen I think Steve said it best by saying you know it's it's not ideal um, for knowing what we know and the, where the location is but there's obviously room for exceptions when we have a special uh, circumstances like this. So I think that's the key in this one. And if I may, Bob, um, if you recall from the last from the last discussion, it was stated th the direction from the planning board was to come back and bring the parties together. That was the direction from this planning board. 
to bring the parties together for a resolution. That was the complete, and this is the resolution uh, that, that, that all parties agreed to with the county and staff that got together. So this is the resolution from, from the direction from the planning board. We you came together. Somebody actually listens to the planning board? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you answer that question, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Horace, for doing that, and staff for bringing it yes. forward. Uh, Ms. Dunaway, did you have something else? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and I appreciate the, um, the playing director uh, mentioning that, and that's just what I wanted to highlight. I, I also want to just note, um, I think some of you know this, but I began my land use career um, as the staff judge advocate for the Naval Air Station on this particular issue with regards to um, air installation compatible use zones. Um, we were the ones back in the early uh, mid 90s in which we put this in place. Um, Captain Tim Thompson called me as his young staff judge advocate and said, get up here. You're going to the board of county commissioners. I don't want any houses in the, out the back gate. <laughs> um, that was before um, Heron's Forest. That was before landfall. That was before phase one and two of Leeward. This, as you pointed out um, uh, from the planning board member, Mr. Pyle, um, is, is phase three of the uh, Leeward. So, we certainly understand um, um, that issue, and as Mr. Jones indicated, we came together to come up with a plan uh, which was um, agreeable for both parties. Absolutely. I do note that it, uh, the development agreement puts in place densities which are, in fact, uh, compatible with the current Navy ACUS planning uh, from a standpoint of the, the unit densities overall. Um, allowing for, for the cluster and is uh, strictly compatible with both uh, existing uh, county ordinances and state law. So thank you for that. Okay. Board members, any additional questions? Drew, did you have something else? I, I would just to back up on that, yes. This is an agreement that locks in the density. Um, aircraft change, aircraft mixtures change, missions change. There may be updated ACU studies in the future. Who knows? Who knows right. what the future is going to bring as far as aircraft and, and mission. Uh, that may change the lines again. But what is happening as part of this agreement is locking that in at this point. Okay. I'm still waiting for the Navy to uh, release a electric-powered jet. <laughs> mm, I haven't heard anything about that. <laughs> Take a lot of charging. <laughs> Just a joke. <laughs> yeah. All right. Board members, any other questions? If not, Chair will entertain a motion on the uh, on the agreement. So moved. Okay. Second. Motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the next public hearing concerning the review of an ordinance amending Chapter 4 of the LDC, Article 4, and Chapter 6 of the LDC. And this is basically along the same lines. You've heard a preview from Drew about why we're doing this, but go ahead and give us additional information. Somewhat like your last future land use cases, this is resolving an inconsistency in the regulations. Um, repealing and replacing and doing a little cleanup. Okay. Board members, do you have any specific questions concerning uh, anything that is in this um, correction? All right, hearing none, Chair will entertain a motion. So moved. Move to accept. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Okay, and our last public hearing is to review of an ordinance amending Chapter 3 of the LDC. This is specifically Sections 3-2.10 and 3-2.11, and Chapter 6 of the LDC, Section 6-0.3. And this is a change uh, to identify state licensed pair of mutual card rooms as permitted within commercial and heavy commercial light industrial districts 
amending chapter six uh, definitions, terms defined to include state statute uh, definitions of card room, paramutual, and paramutual facility. All right, who's uh, gonna give us the background from staff? Drew, is that you? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, as this was brought forward before, our current land use regulations do not allow for this use, which is allowed by the state. We don't have a zoning district where, for it to fit within. Um, and as you propose, this would go in as a permitted use falling under the uh, recreation and entertainment section for commercial and heavy commercial light industrial. Okay. That's the basics. All right, and I know there was discussion about this at previous meeting. Uh, Mr. Dunaway, I know you want to speak on this one as well. Again, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. My name is Will Dunaway, the law firm of Clark Partington, 125 East in Tendencia. Um, I represent the, uh, the entity that owns or that has um, possession of the licensed paramutual uh, facilities in the county. As we discussed in the last planning board meeting when we were before you discussing this matter, um, and I just want to clarify what Mr. Homer said is that <clears throat> this use is not not allowed. It's specifically allowed. The issue is it's not a listed permitted use under your any of your zoning categories. But again, as I pointed out, neither is axe throwing and scrapbooking. All uses are not necessarily listed as permitted uses. However, staff has determined and we are before you and they are presenting for you a solution therefore to add this as a permitted use in two of your zoning categories, both of which we think are uh, appropriate. So the recommendation that you asked staff to come back with was a solution. Um, we didn't think a solution was necessary. I, some of you agreed. Nevertheless, we're here with that solution. We think you ought to approve it. It inserts as a permitted use the licensed paramutual facility as we are um, we think is appropriate in two of the categories in your uh, land development code, that being commercially zoned property or HCLI. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Two. And just to clarify, this also still hasn't changed, falls subject to the state uh, distance uh, requirement, and therefore you're not going to have 28 other people coming in here saying, well, it's now a use. We can do it too, correct? That is correct. State has a hundred mile requirement. What is the next nearest facility? Is that that is there a card room over in Ebro? Ebro. I believe somewhere over there in that area there's some sort of and that's facility. outside of the hundred correct mile radius. Okay. Rachel okay. Rachel, can you bring up the language? Of this all been reviewed by legals for legal sufficiency? Yes, it has. Okay. That's your commercial section. Uh, as you can see, it falls under recreation and entertainment under straight up permitted uses. And Andrew, can you comment on that, on the rationale? I know we had a brief discussion last meeting about possibility of conditional use and not permitted use. Sure. And how that fleshed out in your writing. Okay, so the way that, that fleshed out, um, with a conditional use, when they're coming before the Board of Adjustment, um, a lot of those have very use-specific conditions can they meet them yes or no um, simply by the nature of the state's requirement of that 100 mile requirement and the state has their own licensing issues here and requirements which i would defer to mr dunaway on because i'm 
I mean, dug into all, everything with the state. Um, either it's going to be able to go in within the county or it's not. Um, it, it would be difficult to come up with some sort of county um, conditions specific to this one single thing. There's a there's never going to be more than one. It's that one single current regulations with that one single entity. Um, it that is a condition in itself that would is self limiting. Okay. I kind of understand that. I know the wording. I'm trying to find your underlined wording here, but when I read through it and it was in the permitted uses, I think except for uh, bars, adult entertainment, and yep. yeah, yeah, right there. Go back down. Mm -hmm. there you so go. you know, your bars get their licenses from Fed and or state and things. So mm -hmm. I and we I already have specific. So we already have very specific criteria. For those uses, um, you know, just a straight up alcohol license, depending on the type of license and the distance from schools and places of worship, um, that is its own specific conditional use. But there can be multiple of those throughout the county. Um, this one particular use itself is so specifically limited to just one license in the county. Um, it wouldn't be a matter of well, you know, if, if let's say it comes down to some sort of alcohol license, well, there's, there's a wide range of those that you can have mm -hmm. on-premise, off-premise, mm -hmm. package sales as opposed to beer and wine. Um, and there's a lot of differences between those locations. Okay, is it just outside the 1,000-foot radius from a school, or is it five miles from a school? There's... There's a wide range for each one of those, that which can be basically throughout the county. This is a one-off thing. And when the state set it up, they didn't put any of those kinds of parameters on paramutuals facilities. So, like, Except once again, the 100-mile distance between each other. That's, that's my understanding. Um, should a paramutual facility come in and say, hey, we want an alcohol license, well, then now that's different. We're going to have to review that totally. That's a separate land use completely from yeah. this particular use. And also, too, let me add, and also, too, there are locational criteria. We're not, we're not negating any of the other requirements, any of the any other, other performance standards that they must adhere to. There are locational requirements as well uh, 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 that we will have to look into as well. So, 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 so those, and sometimes, honestly speaking, Sometimes, although, as you know about the location criteria, that could be a showstopper. The site, you see how the site plan process, and those things can be a showstopper as well. I, I just want to so say it does not negate. We're not nullifying any of those other performance standards as well. So, but but that that state requirement, as Drew stated, no one can say it no better. That's very that that's very very stringent and very very imposing. Um, I, I kind of got an odd question. First of all, I'm in favor of approving this, and I think everybody knew that already. But my my question is, the 100 miles, is that as the crow flies, or is that uh, as you drive? I do not know that answer. I would yeah, defer I'm, that I'm, one to I mean, the I hate the, I hate representative. The throw, uh, uh, and I hate to mess with this too much, but... Yeah. The corner of Highway 20 and 79, where Ebro is, pretty much. Man, that that's not, but that's not a hundred miles. I don't believe. Mr. Sammons, the statute provides that the distance shall be measured on a straight line from the nearest property line of one paramutual facility to the nearest property line of the other facility. That's fair. Right. So as long as you meet that hundred mile, I suspect that trims out parts of especially the east side of Escambia County. But again, it's really not our privy to, to that part. I mean, that's between the state and the applicant. Um, all we're doing is saying, is it allowed? It's allowed or it's not allowed. And I would agree. I think we should may allow it. And the rest of it doesn't really matter. Okay. Any other questions? 
Chair will entertain a motion. So moved. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right. Good luck with you, sir. Okay. Anything on action or discussion items? Nothing. Anyone here for public forum? Nope. Hearing none. Horace, anything that you'd like to give in director's review? We we have some some yet remaining. How many rezoning cases do we have so far? We will have three the three small scales. We as I mentioned earlier, the three small scales that went went to industrial. They will be coming in for rezoning from ACLI to industrial. So there should be three, just as a house cleanup as well. So we know we got three rezonings on that. So a total of five rezonings. Um, excuse me, six rezonings, a small scale, and another development agreement. And that's for when? That's for December. December seventh. So, so. <laughs> and 2022 agenda is yeah. coming up. Yeah, so too. we just, I mean, boy, we thank you. Um, we try not to, but when they come in, we have to set them up. Um, I do want to say again, the, the oil affair, I, John just sent me an email earlier. The oil affair site basically is. It's a done deal, per se, so thank Thir you, boy. That was Thursday, fun. the Land Development Code will be, if it gets approved, which it should, it will be the second public hearing of it, so that should be, a, that's the final done deal. All right, so. Come Thursday. Yes. Any cases where the commission changed the recommended order from the planning board that you know of? No, sir. No, sir. We haven't had any, we, we have not had no known sendbacks or okay. no denials or anything. All right, Kia, County Attorney Report. Nothing from me, thank you. <laughs> All right, next scheduled meeting, December 7th. We need you here, so yeah. um, please <laughs> try to make it. We need you here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if I'm not half dead, you know. And, and I, do I really thought I had it that day. And I do want to say this, and planning board, I, I, um, um, I, Mr. Brisky, I want to thank you how you conduct, you and the planning board staff conduct your meetings. It's, it's very, very apparent that this, these type of meetings require a strong chair, strong chairman, strong leadership and procedures. Thank you, Mr. Brisky. And I'm saying that for a purpose. I can, I tell you, if you want to know more, I'll talk to you afterwards. Thank you, Mr. Brisky. <laughs> You got <laughs> that's, that focused. sounds like we're getting a raise, guys. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is Tim had a chair last, and you didn't see it. Oh, oh. You can take it over, Reed. No, no, no. He's done it before. <laughs> I'm sick again. All right.